what this once proud and profitable company sorely needs. What was once a captivating, trend-setting program has now deteriorated into a cliched, let's be honest, boring snooze fest that is in dire need of a knight in shining armor. Television ratings, downward spiral. Interview buy rates. Mainstream acceptance non-existent. And reactions of the live crowds, complete and utter silence. You're silent because you're embarrassed to be here. Honestly, I'm embarrassed for you. And the reason why you're embarrassed is because of the steady stream of uninteresting, untalented, mediocre, Sports entertainers who you're forced to cheer for and care for. No wonder you're not cheering. You can care less about every single idiot in that dressing room. Now, now, here's Joe, here's Cronin. Joe Cronin. Joe Cronin. Hey there, everybody. Tonight, what's going on? Coming out the Royal Rumble in a blizzard right now. We are live in Foxborough, Massachusetts with a gigantic blizzard. We don't know if the power may go out during the show. Who knows? Power could go out at any point. I have no idea. Jake has had problems. Don't even think Jake is here tonight because he's been having issues. I'm not sure, actually. i got to check. I actually never asked him. He just said he was outside and cable was out, I think, or something. So I'm going to find out in a minute. But if he's not here, we are going to open up the phone lines tonight and hear from you guys. It's been a while since we lit the phone lines up at 339-226-6610, the classic phone number that we all know and love of the last. Can you believe I've had that phone number for nine years? Can you guys believe that I've had that damn phone number for nine years? It's ridiculous. What do you think about that, Dr. Earl? Queefy suds of bitches. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. They are some... Qu- <laughs> I can't believe he said that. All right, we got to lower this thing because this, this thing is just way too long. Look at how long this is. Well, you can't even see, so what am I talking about? What's up to the chat? We're waiting for everybody to get in here. Um, obviously, it's a weird night with power outages everywhere in the Northeast. Uh, snow, blizzard conditions. Um, but I will have the phone lines open up in just a second. Let me just go check Discord and see if Jake's here. I'm not sure if he saw Raw tonight. I don't think he did, but I actually didn't look at my Facebook to see what was going on because I was so busy trying to figure stuff out. Um, Damian Priest got some shine tonight. That's good news. Good news for that. Yeah, I don't think I think Jake's going to miss it. I think that's what he said to me earlier, and I, I might have read it wrong. But yeah, Damian Priest, man, he got some shine tonight. The big, the big negative of this show, man, continues to be commentary. We are going to pick apart commentary tonight like I've never done before, okay? We're, we're just going to pick apart commentary. We're going to talk to you guys, and listen, this is not me. When I get mad at commentary and I go into these things and everything else like that, it's not really me saying that, you know, I'm some great, amazing commentator guy. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with that I know that there are several commentators who, throughout America alone that can do it, right? Like, I know several commentators that can tear it up on the microphone. We know tons of commentators that can do it, do a better job than these guys. But we also know that Tom Phillips did a great job or did a good job down in NXT. Why does Tom Phillips do such a bad job on the main roster? And it's because he's sort of announcing how the main roster wants him to announce. You know, it's how Vince wants him to be or how Vince wants him to announce or whatever the case is. But whatever it is, it's ridiculous and it's bad. And everybody is saying it. Everybody's been saying it. Everybody's known it, you know, and we continue to know it. And and it just continues to be worse and worse. You've even seen it a little bit before, you know, in AEW where things are like all right, but they're not the best. And, you know, Jericho jumps on commentary, makes things a whole lot better. They have so many commentary teams on uh, AEW, they, they could just mix and match it up in a certain way. But it's whoever they trot out there 
is just so bad, man. So bad. Whoever whoever they trot out there doesn't matter. And they sit there, and one of the biggest examples of this tonight, uh, and what's up, everybody? By the way, I put the Patreon link up top. It's the first of the month, so I always want to push. Bad Bunny sucks. Yeah, I agree. Bad Bunny's terrible. It's the first of the month, so I always want to push the Patreon. Tons of bonus content on the Patreon. But on the first of the month is when people have to cancel or their cards don't work or things go wrong or whatever. And it's always a depressing day because you see so many people drop off. But then over the next few days, everybody comes back and builds it up again. So it's a great day to re-up on the Patreon if you haven't done that. I would much appreciate it, obviously. Helps out my uh, uh, self-esteem, I'll tell you that. But not only that, there's, uh, there's hours of content, of bonus content on the Patreon, plus me and Jake's podcast my solo podcast. There's just so much stuff on there, man. So I hope you guys check out Patreon because there's so much shit. And I definitely want to shout out uh, Jay, who became a producer. He went up to the $25 producer spot. Thank you to Jay and Bad Omen. Um, people in the chat liked Raw. Some people didn't like Raw. So some people thought it was mediocre. I understand. Um, and no, my computer did not crash. My computer should be fine. You should be good. Uh, it's good cast. There's just It's all good tonight. I think your phone might have crashed, brother. Uh, check your phone out. Uh, Nick Bryant. What's going on, Nick Bryant? Good to hear from you. Sam Cortez. Bad Bunny versus Morrison next week for Raw. Doesn't help uh, Doesn't help people who can't afford anything from the pandemic. Yeah, that's. there's no doubt about it. That, there's no doubt about it, man. That's why it's so thankful that you guys who are, who are actually making good money or making a lot of money or whatever it is or making okay money drop donations and our patrons like Jay became a $25 producer and Bad Omen is back. Um, I can't thank you guys enough for being there, man. When there's so many people that can't do the dollar anymore, can't do the $2 anymore, can't do the 5 and $10 anymore, at least there's, you know, it's it's amazing that people who are doing well still or doing good enough that they want to come on and support the show big time. Without you guys, we couldn't do this, man. Me and Jake couldn't do it. I couldn't do all the other shows I do. We wouldn't be here without you, and we continue to do this, man, and have a great, fun community on Patreon. Some of the shit this week on Patreon, dude. Oh, my God. What the fuck? Um, but, yeah, dude, the commentary just so bad. They come back and they go, we just don't know why. Seamus attacked Drew McIntyre. We don't know why Seamus attacked Drew McIntyre. We don't know why. Like, what are you talking about? Tom Phillips sits there and goes, we just don't know why Seamus attacked Drew McIntyre. And then they all sit there and look like somebody died. Somebody pulled the picture of Seamus, Samoa Joe, and, oh, I'm sorry, Tom Phillips, Samoa Joe, and Byron Saxon. By the way, you don't get any, and listen, I hate to bring it up, bring up the whatever, the, the old joke about, whatever, and self-hating on my people. Oh, my God, we're self-hating on white people. Lame white motherfuckers. All right? Somehow Byron Saxton is a lame white motherfucker. Okay? Tom Phillips is a dweeb dork lame -o. Byron is a dweeb dork, dork lame -o. And Samoa Joe is... He's the most legitimate, but he even plays this character of analyst or something, like where he's like... Well, Tom, that's what he's looking for when he puts him in that move. You know, he's going to... It's just way too like, hey, we're the commentator guys. We just don't know why he did it. And then they all... And then, like, Samoa Joe looks, like, dejected. Byron Saxon looks disappointed. And Tom Phillips looks like he's announcing Owen Hart's death again. Like, Byron Saxon looks like he's o announcing Owen Hart's fucking death is what he looks like. Byron... Uh, Tom Phillips, that is. Ridiculous. Stupid and ridiculous and horrible. Now, on Twitter, I gave an example of how you could spice that up a little bit and make it a little bit better if you just had a heel guy on commentary. Instead of having everyone on the same page of this seriousness, we just... Well, I, I'm at a loss for words for what just happened. Sheamus attacking his best friend, Drew McIntyre. We just look to get answers as to why Sheamus did this. And then they all look sad. These aren't fucking real people. Let me explain to you what they should have done. I did it on Twitter for the people that saw this on Twitter. This is what they should have fucking done. 
And I'm going to get to the donations in a minute, by the way. If you guys want to donate, the links are down below. Um, th there's two different links down below. One's the, one's the one you always know. You can use whatever you want, uh, PayPal, the stream of things, whatever you want to do. And then there's the other one, which you can use as well. That one has credit card options and other options and more options now that I've partnered with multiple companies. Thank you guys for that. It's down below. Links are right at the top. You just could expand the description box. And then all the donation amounts. Remember, guys, there's new donation amounts. They're all listed down below, too, so you can see them. Um, we'll have more coming again soon, but just just an FYI, people have been asking. So sorry, I'm gonna say that. But yeah, here's what I said on Twitter. We just don't know why that Sheamus has attacked Drew McIntyre. We just don't know. Tom, what are you, an idiot? Tom, you are the biggest idiot ever. He's the WWE champion, Drew McIntyre. He's the champion. He's the one everybody's looking for. Everybody wants that belt. You think Sheamus doesn't want that belt? What, because they have some kind of little friendship? Do you know how many friendships have have been destroyed by money, greed, power? Do you know how much money that belt brings in when you're a champion? Do you know the prestige of the title? Do you even know what's going on? Do you know we're in the WWE? Tom, you're an idiot. Well, we don't know why Sheamus is doing this. I know why he's doing it. Because he's smart. But you're an idiot. You don't know why. That's why you're sitting here. Well, it, I mean, Joe, you're sitting here, too. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting here, too, but I actually did this stuff. I actually made a lot of money. You just came up after college like some pipsqueak sitting here at a desk with a pencil, and you think you're something. You know, you, this, is why, this is why I'm here. This is why I get paid more money than you, to shed light on these situations where you just sit here and go, I don't know why Seamus attacked me. Idiots. Well, I get... I get paid just fine. Uh, anyway, be, be that as it may, we we really don't. It's a shock to Drew McIntyre what's happened. It's like, can we have some kind of banter like that? Instead of acting like someone dies every time. We just don't know why um, Sheamus did this. So fake, we man. Don't. And by the way, at the end of Raw, at the end of freaking Raw, do you know what they said when Alexa Bliss was in the corner and her mouth was bleeding, that stuff from the fifth element? Do you know what they said? I think Tom Phillips said, I think the exact word, I got to think about it now, actually. I think it's the exact word, what, what, what did we just see? What did we just see? Or, or something like, we've never seen anything like that before? What was the quote? <clears throat> I'm sorry, I just hit Gaz, Gazamania's comment. I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry, Gazamania. Um, by the way, Jake DeMarco's power's out. He's not going to be here. Um, his power's out. Uh, he's got a major issue with the storms going on. Everything's fucked up. We're going to take phone calls, though. Uh, my nails are blue. Yeah, my daughter painted my nails blue. Come on, bro. When, I, when you have a daughter, your daughter paints your nails. That's what happens. My daughter's inside. She hasn't seen her friends in weeks, and she cried today. I just want to paint somebody's nails, and I just want to play something with somebody. And, uh, and all the kids are, are inside scared because their crazy parents are locking them inside because of COVID. So my daughter has nobody to play with. So I go, sweetheart, you can paint my nails, honey. Like, paint my nails, like, give me a wig, give me a freaking, do whatever you want. You know what I mean? So, yeah, my nails are uh, or blue or whatever. I told her blue and pink, so I did blue and pink. So I look like Alexa Bliss a couple days ago. Um, Scree Screech is dead. Yeah, I knew he was going to die because I saw a couple months ago the lung thing, so I didn't even respond to it on Twitter because I just said, oh, my God, he's going to die. And I just sort of didn't even, I wasn't shocked at all because I followed the news when he got sick uh, a month ago or whatever it was. Um... No, what, what did they say at the end? Somebody in the chat. Somebody knows, right? Somebody hit me up in the chat. What did they say at the end? They were like, wow, we've never seen anything like this before. Or, oh, my God, like, what are we seeing right now? I can't believe. Oh, it was, I can't believe we just saw that. They keep saying that. Every time Alexa Bliss does something, she comes in the ring on a horse like a hooker. She fucking disappears like a fucking ma ma magical homosexual. Um, she disappears like a fucking Bad Bunny's fucking testosterone whatever it is they go oh my god we've never seen anything like this or what did we just see what did we just see are you really that surprised anymore that alexa bliss was sitting on a turnbuckle bleeding like the fifth element and you're like oh my god you saw her do this the other week you you saw a fucking human being set on fire you saw the fiend set on fucking fire for christ's sake what are we seeing you're seeing mind games is what you're seeing. Like, dude, here's the call when Alexa Bliss is in the corner. What, Byron, Byron, what the hell is that? More mind games. 
More mind games from Alexa Bliss or whatever she is now. I don't know what's going on. Are you saying she's not human? I don't know, man. I don't know what she is. But we're seeing some crazy stuff that I've never seen before ever in wrestling or in my career. And I'm and I'm it's actually making me uneasy. Well, I mean, we did <laughs> I mean, we saw the Fiend set on fire. I mean, like is there anything what the hell else are we going to see here in WWE? You know, any that any of that would be better than what are we seeing? And oh my god, wow. Like, oh my god, wow. She's bleeding. Bring me a case with four stones in it. Not one or two or three, but four. You can count. Look, look at my fingers. One, two, three, four. A case. What am I supposed to do with an empty case? I mean, okay, she bled like the fifth element. We get it. We've seen crazier shit go on, bro. Have better banter on commentary to where it's believable. Have the fucking commentary appear to be believable, for Christ's sake, bro. Joe, was this a snooze fest? Correct. Carlito in good shape, but no one cares about him. Elias and his goon are a joke. Damien is cool, but Miz and Morrison are just dumb. I know Miz can talk, but he's so cheesy. Can I re viewed by Naomi Cho? I would love to see it, Diverse. What up, Diverse? The, the donation, donation is from the Great Diverse. Go inside me, Diverse. Go inside me. Go ahead. Listen, um, I, I like Carlito was the most fun thing to watch to me because it was impressive to see how he changed. Kind of like Jinder Mahal. When Jinder Mahal became this raging beast, you know? Um, but I don't care about, ex you know, dude, oh, my God, the New Day stuff, they were wicked. They're cringe. I don't know what happened to the New Day, dude, but they are full cringe. The New Day, the New Day is full cringe now, man. They were super cringe. They're fucking woo, -woo, -woo, -woo whatever they're doing, cringe. Miz and Morrison, cringe. Bad Bunny, cringe, but somehow the best part of all of that. I don't know how that is. Bad Bunny's weird, but Bad Bunny, better than all that stuff. Damian Priest, solid tonight. Damian Priest looked good. Edge saying like, we need more guys like you. That wasn't that wasn't cringy, so that was good. Normally, like it's like, man, you're really cool, dude. Like, what's your name? I'm Damian Priest. Cool, man. Like, uh, it's stupid. But at least Edge was like, yeah, man. Listen, we need more guys like you. Whatever. It was cool. Like, it was like whatever. I'm not a big fan of it, but he was already shown earlier. We, why do we need extra validation with Edge? I don't know. But whatever. It that was okay. Damian Priest looks good. Edge looked good. Um, you know, I. Everything else was just so bad, man. They're, I don't know. Is Carlito back permanent? People are asking that question. You know, they did this with MVP, and they've done this with other people, too. They bring them back, and uh, what, what is this? Uh, what did you send me, Shy God? What did you say? What you say, baby? I'm saying you need to get that beard up. <laughs> we need to get what? <laughs> get the same beard I got. Well, y'all both motherfuckers need to get both apparently. You need what? to get that beard up. <laughs> I need to get what? My beard up? Is that what she said? I don't know what she said. What'd your wife say, Shy God? I don't know. Your wife, he goes, my wife sends her regards. I don't know what she said, though. What, what, did she say something about my beard? I don't have a beard. I got pubes on my face, brother. I got little sprinkles on my face. Shit bomb! You become a shit bomb. D-K-E-Z-E. -E. What up, man? Thank you so much for dropping four ninety nine, dude, and supporting my show. A little bit there, man. Much appreciated, dude. Thank you so much, man. Very appreciative. Oh, my God. What, tonight was whacked out, bro. I don't know. This was just, you know, what, this was another, you know, we don't know what we're doing yet. Here's here's a couple things. Um, you know, they're classic for doing this stuff. We, we know they are. I'm just going to open Skype real quick. Um, but yeah, this is this is classic WWE tonight, you know, just whatever. I thought it was kind of boring. Some people found the show nice, you know. If you found the show to be a nice show, cool. I don't think it was very good. I was probably around 3, 4 out of 10 tonight. Um, if you thought it was better, you know, that's awesome. If you had a good time with it, then that's great, man. I'm not going to take away your time at all. I'm just going to tell you what I think. By the way, phone lines are open. 339-226-6610. Jake is in a blizzard. I'm in a blizzard. But uh, he lost his power. We're going to go to the comments in a minute, too. We're going to look over what went on on Rod Night. We're going to go to the beginning and check it out and uh, talk about a few other little things, too. I got all kinds of bullshit going on. Um, you, you know, they, they, the beginning, that was all right. I understand what they were doing. Um, you know, Drew McIntyre comes out. Sheamus, you know, comes out like he's going to protect Drew 
against Edge. Like, what are you doing? And then, of course, Sheamus attacks Drew. We all knew that was coming. A lot of people are questioning, though, does this mean does this mean Sheamus is taking on Drew at WrestleMania? Or does this mean Drew is taking on Sheamus before WrestleMania? And good God, I got to turn my ringing off on Skype. And I just did, so you're welcome. I don't know, bro. But let's hear from a guy who couldn't get through on the Rumble review last night. Uh, but he's wet, and his name is Bill Cosby. No, nah, Rostafa, what's going on? Didn't know I was that much of a rapist to you, Joe. Oh, my God, I, dude. I you, you sound like a robot murderer. That. You sound like a robot murderer I, right now. I mean, I appreciate the fact that you thought of me such a so low, but, I mean, tonight was, uh, well, I mean, could it get as low as me right now? Uh, but, uh, I mean... <laughs> I, I think we could say that anything could happen in WWE taking on a whole new meeting after that last image of what we saw tonight. Uh, what do you um, mean? You because Alexa Bliss like uh, bubbled out some uh, Fifth Element juice? She came black ink out of a mouth. Yeah. Um, it, oh, is that how? That's how you took it, huh? It was sexual. Well, she's trying to say Black Lives Matter. I don't know if she's <laughs> asking for some for some cock. I don't know, bro. Like I'm confused. Well, I, I think, yeah. Um, yeah, I think she was trying to show him that she was creaming. Didn't didn't know she creamed black ink. I didn't know she was an uh, uh, Oreo. Oh yeah, of course she is, man. Of course yeah, she is. But little little white black chick. on the inside. Well, now you got a chance, man. Now you got a chance. Well, I mean, I'm I'm already half and half, so I kind of think it would be a bit redundant. I I think you were right. I'm... But yeah, what I mean, did you like Raw? I mean, like you didn't like the. What did you think of the Rumble last night and Raw tonight? I mean, because I didn't get to talk to you last night. Right. So for me, overall, I thought I had a good flow as far as an overall show. Yeah. But again, is it like up there in like the top like five or ten? <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, I mean, again, for me, the highlights were, of course, you know, just looking back at it. You know, again, I thought like the, the it was an interesting dynamic with the handcuffs that they were using in uh, the Owens Reigns match in a, in a new way. But it took forever to get the handcuffs off, which was a little bit weird. Um, but there's also like uh, you know the Rumble itself, as far as the men's Rumble, uh, I thought at least. I don't know. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was just almost like everyone was pulling for the obvious with Daniel Bryan because, you know, again, it was more one of those things where it's like the moment he said that he was entering the Rumble that he really wanted to win it, I'm thinking to myself, maybe because Biggie's already got the IC belt. Um, a couple other rivalries are going to be coming out of the Rumble based upon what's happened over the past couple of weeks. So I was a little bit kind of like, eh, oh, well. But, you know, I mean, it is what it is. So... Again, I thought it was an okay show. I mean, I was all for Bianca winning because if God, God, if Charlotte would have won for like a second time or a third time, I don't remember how many times she won. I want to take a look at that it, Bianca too. Speaking of Bianca, that her coming, her getting eliminated. People are saying she didn't. She actually got eliminated because her feet touched the ground. Yeah, on Twitter. Yeah, so this is all over Twitter. Now I took a look at this in slow motion. So I just want to say, you know, I looked at this in slow motion. And the thing is, what happens is her feet actually do not touch the ground at the same time. Yeah, and I'm starting to see the same thing because everybody's constantly watching the tape because I'm seeing it on my thread, and everybody's like arguing, like piss and vinegar over this. And I'm like, guys, she didn't hit the floor because even if she did, she only had one foot touch the ground, and you need both feet. Well, it looks like both feet in the photos. If you if you stop the video. It actually looks like both feet are touching the ground. Um, but what I did was I watched it in slow motion, very slow, in HD. And she doesn't touch the ground because what happens in the photos is it's an optical illusion. Her boots right. are black. And the shadow her boots, her, the bottom of her boots are black. And the, and the shadow her boots are making on the ground is also black because the lights are creating a shadow. So it looks like the black is absorbing the shadow. looks like the black of the boots are, are connecting to the black of the shadow on the ground, making an effect that makes it look like she's actually touching the ground. She actually is not. 
I, I, I thought the same thing. I shared it too. Like, oh, shit, she touched the ground. First of all, this spot was so stupid. There was no need for both girls to go flying over the top rope and then dangle around like, yeah, oh, my God, we got it. There was no need. When they went over the top, they both caught themselves on the apron. They just needed to roll back in the ring. But they went over the top, and then they, like, unnecessarily went, oh, my God, and they started, you know, acting like they went further than they needed to go, and that created this photo, which should, and shouldn't even have happened. So, Rostafa, man, thank you so much for the call. But this was, um, it's it, she didn't touch the ground, at least from what I saw. Somebody else has some other slow motion thing that I didn't see. I don't know, bro. But the, but the bottom of the boots is black, and the shadow makes it look like they're connecting. So I saw people today that were like, leave her alone, it's her moment. Uh. It's like, dude, people always question this stuff. But the but the boots were, um, you know, it's an optical illusion. All right? if it, I, I watched it. Shit bomb! You become a shit bomb. Lol Cronin, you Jake Drew, Jesse got me laugh rolling, smiley face, appreciate the great times, Cronin, whoop, cheers, beer. Uh, thank you, JCS Foot Rub. Thank you, man, for the $5 JCS Foot Rub. Yeah, and I don't agree with the whole, like, of course they're turning it into a race thing, you know, they're like, oh, you just don't like her because she's black and she won. Like, that's what people are arguing on Twitter. I'm like, what are they, do why, are you serious? Who the fuck Shit, is, Bob! who thinks that, are you serious? You become... A shit bomb. We, I mean, we love Bianca here. Rip Screech, crying face. Yeah, sorry, Screech. I saw that he got the lung infection or the lung cancer a little while back, and I was like, man, he's, you know, he's in trouble. You know, it feels like everybody's got lung shit going on now. You know, on top of the fact that COVID's out there, now everybody's got lung stuff. Um, yeah, give a call back. I'll try to get you on, man. Lots of calls coming through. Really appreciate that. What's up, Mike? Thank you so much for the support, man. Hit that like uh, button, I suppose. Um. Yeah, I don't, I'm not really sure. Who cares? It's predetermined anyway, Gazamania. Well, I mean, I just people care. You know, they they you know they care about the shit making sense and whatever. You know what I mean? Of course. We're gonna find out, brother. Um. Did I not get it loaded? I'm sorry. I was trying to. <laughs> I was waiting for a donation to come through, and it didn't come through. And I think I know why. I think it's because I didn't load it. Oh my bad. Here we go. Let me load it right. Let me see if I can connect them. Okay, let's go back here. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Let's see. Fuck here it is. There we go. Awkward moment of silence. Bitch. Ripley is a better baby face. Oh. Randy Viper tip $3. Sorry. Answer this truthfully. Okay. Hand on heart. Do you really believe Bullfrog is a pedophile? Yes or no answer. And fuck Raw and screw Edge winning. Good now God. best case scenario is Drew versus Cena, Roman versus Edge. Yeah, you might be right about that, Randy Viper. Randy Viper, thanks for the three dollars. Yeah, I, I don't think no, I don't think he's a pedo. I don't know. I mean he's weird. Says weird stuff about his family and his, his niece. Kind of strange. But, I mean, I don't know, man. I don't I don't think the guy's really a pedo. If I really thought the guy was a pedo, he wouldn't be on the show. <laughs> I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> we got a new member. Yes. Oh, I'm hard. I'm so good. Oh, my God, I'm hard for the new member. <gasps> okay, that's the new, uh, is that the new member sound? Everybody, that's the new member sound. When you become a member down below in green... Hopefully that's the hopefully that's the sound you hear when you become a member. I don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> but we're going to try to make it work. Thank you for supporting the show, man. When you guys hit that green membership button down below and you become members. It's much appreciated. 
Let me see if I can get it uploaded in time to make that go off. I haven't, fi I haven't. There's a lot of things I haven't fixed yet, so that that's definitely one of them. But uh, <laughs> dude, there's something wrong with me. All the weird songs I've made and, and stuff, I don't even know, dude. My wife thinks <laughs> I'm insane. My wife thinks I'm insane. Um, let's see. Okay, I think we got it set. I think we got it set. Three three nine two two six. Bullfrog, you call back, man. Bullfrog's called nine hundred times. We'll put you on the air, Bullfrog. What'd you think of Raw? Three three nine two two six sixty six ten. We'll try to get you on. I think I fixed the membership thing. So uh, give it a try again. We'll figure it out, Bullfrog. Okay. Thanks, man. Randy Orton looked all right. Yeah. Edge was fine, man. I like what Edge is doing. It's just, um, it, I mean, we all thought he was going for Roman, so that makes sense. You know, get him on the air tonight, make him tease this, and he's on Raw, and eventually he's going to go over and um, challenge Roman. I mean, we all we all were 100% sure it's Orton, but I don't know yet. Does anybody know? Was he was Is Sheamus and Drew on for WrestleMania, or was that a challenge just coming up? So is, the, is Sheamus the stepping stone to Mania, or are they really going to go with Sheamus versus Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania? It's a little wild. That's what they do. Shit bomb! You become What's up, JCS a shit rub? bomb. JCS Foot Rub with the $5, man. He can't beat the top dog, DKEZE, -E, though. He's close, man. You got to do a little bit better than him. We'll get you on there. I'm going to go back to the donos in a second. We got more popping in. Uh, let me go back to the phones. I hung up on like six people. My bad, man. Two, one, three made it, though. What's up? Hey, what's up, Joe? What's going on, man? How are you doing this evening? I'm doing great, man. Is this Luis Antonio? Hell yeah. What's going on, brother? Oh, nothing much. I actually missed the first five minutes of Raw tonight. Oh. What are you making, dildos? Boy, did they turn Seamus wheel. Yeah, you know, what, you like Seamus? You're upset about that? Well, I, I'm kind of upset about that. Why? You're upset that Seamus is a heel? You want to be a face? I wanted him to be baby face for a little while more. Oh. Okay, so you now you're so you don't like Drew, or you like Drew too, or what's going on? I wanted to see them as a tag team. You wanted to see the what during WrestleMania? No, I, I'm basically saying I did want to see them as a tag team in general. You wanted to see them as a tag team. Yep. Well, who did you want Drew to face though? Ooh, let me see here. Edge. Oh, you wanted Drew to face Edge, so then you wanted who to face Roman. <laughs> Bill Goldberg. Oh, my God. I'm just going to go have to blow him up. Shout out to uh, Luis Antonio Alejandro for the call, though. He is a $25 producer on Patreon. Luis Antonio Alejandro, thank you so much, sir. But we did have to blow you up. Gonna have to blow you up on that one. Hey, Joe. Do you grade AU and WWE differently? AU can have an average show and you will give it a higher grade than a raw average show. Do you grade on a scale due to AU being a newer brand? Also, check out my new podcast, TJ Knows Wrestling, on YouTube. Thank you, TJ. TJ knows wrestling on YouTube. Oh, now you're going to dive into wrestling, huh? About time, you son of a bitch. Uh, no, I um, maybe we'll get maybe we'll get Dave Rose on the show to call you an N word again. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> TJ, man, what's up? We'll check it out. You listen, TJ. Um, now I, I grade on the fact that there's an excitement level and a feeling of anything can happen from AEW, right? There's a feeling of anything can happen and a more realism and exciting moments in AEW. I don't think AEW has average shows like WWE Raw does. SmackDown we've given fives and sixes to. AEW we've given fives and sixes to as well. Raw has been awful. This is nothing like AEW. Raw is so cookie cutter and boring. 
and the announcing sucks. So, number one, the announcing is so bad that the announcing in AEW is clearly better. So, right there, that's at least a point, if not two, right? And then you get you, you can swear on AEW. The guys feel more authentic. It's, it seems more real. Even if it's bad, it feels like it's they took a chance and it was crazy or something like that. WWE feels compact in a little place with people on screen and overproduced and very garbage made for little kids. AEW doesn't feel made for little kids. Even when they have cringy, crappy moments, it still feels more exciting than WWE. Like, 100%. That's why a, like a pretty bad AEW show for me will still get a 5 out of 10 a lot of times. Whereas a bad WWE Raw will usually drop a 1, 2, or 3. And that's just the answer. AEW is ahead by 2 to 3 points every time because they don't treat the audience completely retarded. And that's just that's what it is. That's really what it is. There is a difference. No doubt there's a difference. It's got to be. Two four zeros yeah, on the phone. What's up, man? Hey, what's going on, Joe? What's up? Hey, man, I thought Raw was uh, kind of stupid tonight, but at the same time, uh, I, 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 uh, I enjoyed actually the fact that they, uh, they, they, they put on... Uh, you know how they presented Damian Priest, how uh, how how Bad Bunny, you know how they had Bad Bunny uh, presented pre- present, you know Damian Priest. At least they pushed him, you know. Yeah, they gave they gave Damian Priest a good look tonight. That's that's one of the most positive things about the show, no doubt. Right, right, because you know Vince never really had. This is like the this is the first time I've ever seen somebody. Uh, you know, he must have really had a hard on for uh, for Bad Bunny or something because. You know, he's never really had a guest show up twice at a show. So I'm, I'm like, okay, he must, I mean, this guy, Bunny guy, you know, I'm Latino, so I know about him, but most people think he sucks because he doesn't really rap in English. So, yeah. But he's a huge star, though, and I'm, I'm glad he, you know, I'm glad he pushed Damien Priest. Do you, now, can you tell me, do you think Bad Bunny sucks? Do you think people think he sucks because well, he doesn't speak English, or do you think he sucks because he's like the Latino Jake Paul? Like, what do you think, what's the difference there? Well, Bad Bunny is, uh, let's just say at first I thought he was a homosexual. <laughs> That's what I first thought. I just thought he just, you know, his music, you know, a lot That's of people okay. touch their ear because he cusses, he cusses a lot in his raps and he talks a lot of crazy stuff. So He's like Cardi I, B, Cardi B, the male Cardi B of well, Latin. In, in a way, yes. In a, in a way, yes. That's the male Cardi B. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, 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 I mean... He's not real popular, though. I mean, the women love him. They love to suck his cock. But I, I feel, honestly, I, I think on the low, he's, he's in the closet. But <laughs> Yeah, I get I get that. Know. So so it's really that, like, I, like, I don't want I don't want to, I'm not going SJW. I'm not saying it's the homophobic people or homophobia. I'm just saying it's that sort of, like, annoying, like, all the women like him, so you're annoyed. You just, he looks like a little bitch. So, like, you know, you're, it's just a, he's a fucking, he's annoying. He's like when, when Roman Reigns was over with all the women and the kids, he was, you were, like, cringy. Yeah, we'll, we'll put it like this. He's like a rap version of Ricky Martin. He's like, right. <laughs> yeah, okay, I get you. Yeah, okay. You know, thank you, Joe. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, I man, appreciate I appreciate it, the yeah. insight, dude. I do. I appreciate the insight because, obviously, I don't, you know, speak a lot of Spanish. And, you know, so, I mean, other than uh, Buenos Noches, um, that's about it. <laughs> Domo arigato. Haruko semas. Shout out to all my Japanese friends out there. And a nihao to all the Chinese out there. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know, man. I guess, like, I don't think it's I, I don't think it's people hating on him because he doesn't speak English. I think people just hating on him because he just, like, I guess they don't know who he is. Or they think he's a bitch, like one of the two. That's what you're saying to me. People calling him a bitch or whatever. I mean, listen, I don't want to hate on people that, are gay. So if the I don't, people are saying, "Oh, they don't like him because he's gay or he looks gay," well, what the hell is that about? There is something about. There is a lot of hate sometimes towards people who aren't gay, but they act like they could, like seem like they're feminine or could be gay. There's more hate on that sometimes than on actual gay. Like if you're a gay guy, people just go, "Oh yeah, that's a, he's gay." Like I don't know, whatever. But if there's a guy who's straight and he's all like, what's up, guys? It's me. And he, uh, some reason that gets more hate. 
You know, what I, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm talking about. Like people just get annoyed, or like it's weird. Like I don't know, but we people do it though. You know what I'm talking about. So maybe that's the type of heat you're talking about. I, I guess I don't know. I don't know anything about that. I just know that he. Why is his name Bad Bunny? Shouldn't it be like, like, something in Spanish? Like, why is his fucking name Bad Bunny? You know what I mean? Why, why would you? Why would your name be Bad Bunny? You know what I mean? Yeah, his name is Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny. But you're saying he sings mostly in Spanish, right? So why, why is his name Bad Bunny? Should his name be like? Shouldn't his name be like Conjito something? Conjito Malo? Why the fuck is his name Bad Bunny? Shouldn't it be Big, like, Die Gringo or something? Like, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't get it. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to the... Let me go to the donations again. I don't get it, man. <laughs> yeah. Gran Desquidada. <laughs> <laughs> Bad Bunny It should be It'd be like Yo my name is Bad Bunny <laughs> Oh my god dude My name The chat is gonna Drive me nuts uh, Soy Pequena <laughs> Or something like that I don't know bro We could do it all night Where's the donuts Here they come Are you ready for this Are you ready Bring back the nine dollars, Lesnar Dono. Literally the best song. You're Always right. May. Watched on mute and still the coolest part was Lexi gargling the devil's semen. Keep up the good work. Joe's Perinium, thank you so much for the tw twelve dollars. Uh, very much, man, for the twelve bucks. And that is the top dono, man. You're gonna be the top dog, no doubt about it. Um, yes, I am gonna bring back the nine dollar one. So that is coming back. So you fear not. The the nine dollar Brock Lesnar is coming back. I I don't even know. I thought it was back, but I guess I didn't add it. So that's coming. So that is coming back. Jake's power is out tonight. He didn't see the show, so he's dealing with all that stuff going on. I'm surprised my power hasn't gone out yet. So if I disappear randomly out of nowhere tonight, you know that it's uh, <laughs> you know my power ended up going out. Three three nine two two six sixty six ten. The, the calls are uh, back shit on the board again. Bomb. You become a shit bomb. Thank you, JCS Foot Rub, for the dollar. And um, okay, I guess we'll take his call. It's called nine hundred times. It's Bullfrog. Hey, Bullfrog. What up, baby? You want some of Daddy? Oh yeah. Is that why you're here? Yeah, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> What did you think of Raw tonight, Bullfrog? Uh, I give it a six for for trying. A six for trying. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Randy Orton Edge match wasn't too bad, and uh, the Alexa stuff with the uh, the black cum out of her mouth, I thought that was kind of hot. Yeah, you gonna slow or that down? Had... Turn that into a GIF, and you know, yeah, wax man, away. She, yeah, she had the she had the black cum coming out, man. Oh, you like that? <laughs> She she wanted she wasn't getting naughty with with that black cum man. You know somebody asked me they th if you're really a pedo. They were like, oh, is he? You really think he's a pedo? No, dude, I am getting so annoyed with that bullshit. I don't know where the fuck that's coming from. I don't either, man. I I mean, like, you know, of course you're not I don't really know a pedo. Where the fuck that's coming from? I am getting so annoyed with that with that bullshit. Neither, neither do the children. No, but uh, you know, if you were listen, if you were a pedo, you wouldn't be on the show. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. There there is an actual guy who was a pedo. We found out about, and he's never come back to the show ever. Oh, you're talking about? Uh, no, the, no, uh, don't say his name. Come on. Oh, oh, oh yeah. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, so, I know. Yeah, there's but a yeah, there's um, actually a couple of them. There's a, there's a few of them, to be honest. And once everybody found out about them, now do you still now do you still think uh, Edge is going to fight Roman still, or do you think he's really going to go after Drew McIntyre? Yeah, I thought this. Um, I thought the same thing. Like maybe it's a, it's a, you know, he's gonna pretend to be coming out there, but then, 
you know, he's going to really go after the other guy. But yeah, I, I don't think um, – I think he's really going to go after Roman. I think it's total good guy, bad guy, Roman edge. I think that's what's going down. Yeah, but now what if WWE flips the script? Because they had a really good power uh, storyline with Drew and, uh, and Edge. I think there might be pulling for that. I mean, I don't think so because then you get two faces, you know, facing well, off against each other. And I, I don't think Edge is going to put, you know. Well, would, not if they did a storyline really well. Yeah, but I just think they're setting up already for. You know, for, yeah, for I don't for know, Roman. man. I think they're they're trying to swing uh, McIntyre. Well, who's going to face we'll, Roman? Who's going to face Roman then? Um, not sure. And and, and, Ro and now Roman's Roman. and now Roman's going up against the evil former best friend Sheamus. So. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I think that uh, I think they should have Drew and uh, and Sheamus go at it. I think they're stalling. I think they're trying to get Lesnar or trying to get some other big name to come back and face Drew. Literally, somebody who's not on the roster. Yeah. Because Raw, Raw's, Raw's roster is piss poor. Like, the roster is bad. The show's bad. The talent is bad at this point. The The writing is oh, bad. The whole show's bad. Dude, yeah, fucking Byron Saxon. He is so annoying, bro. Like, especially when they were talking about... Uh, uh, like I, yeah, I agree with you, bro. I saw your Twitter earlier and saying something about uh, we don't know why uh, Saxton uh, or um, or Seamus uh, attacked uh, McIntyre. They act like uh, they just saw something incredible, like they never saw that, uh, like <laughs> like like you never really saw that happen. Like people, when you're the WWE champion, you got a target on your back. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it, man. And listen, Bullfrog, we're going to see you tomorrow on Throwdown, right? Oh, yeah, Daddy. Tomorrow night on Throwdown, Bullfrog is going to have some answering and explaining to do. Oh, um, uh, am I Thank you very much, Bullfrog. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, no, <laughs> he really doesn't have any explaining to do. I just want him to freak out. Oh, my God. He was like, oh, oh did you <laughs> did you're all freaked out he got at the end of that. Holy shit. Colonel Santos. Tikio Rising is here. Colonel Santos tipped three dollars. Joe, you truly are a forgiving person. But fuck Belair for blocking hope they make her match a hanging match. The oh. champ has the advantage as they can use a rope or her long hair for some hangings. Oh my god. Truly a BLM driven movement for that spooky vinegar. Oh my god. Jesus. Hey, uh, thanks for subbing, uh, Chris Caveman. Subbing to me on Prime. Thank you for the sub, man on Twitch Prime. Thank you. If you guys want to re-up your subs on Twitch, that'd be awesome. I'm going to stream on Twitch soon. We got um, Blizzard coming up, uh, BlizzCon. We got a bunch of other stuff coming up, bro. Yeah, I don't know why uh, Bianca Belair blocked me. Um, I don't know why that is, man, but I don't know why people always think it's some race thing. So, like, it, like dude, it's... Oh, my God, dude. It's always like... Dude, if a person who's black or African-American gets pushed... Then people go, oh, my God, they're only getting pushed because they're African-American. And then when people get pushed that are African-American or black, everybody goes, oh, my God, yay. It's like, e either way, why is everybody making it? Like, what is going on? You know, like, I mean, I, I don't know. Everybody starts fighting about it. Like, it's so weird, dude. 2021 is a weird fucking year of weird people. Like, weird people. People actually, like, not liking it, like, are being racist. Then people that are not racist. Then people claiming everything's racist, so finally this isn't racist. Like, just weird. Like, dude, what? Did I didn't think of that at all the other night. I just thought, like, literally Bianca Belair was in my top three, top four, or something like that. Because she's fucking fire. Like, but everybody turns it into, like, oh, they're only pushing her because she's black. Or, finally, a black woman. Like, it's like everybody's got some fucking retarded fucking take on this. Um, but I don't know, man. And by the way, that fucking donation was fucked up, bro. That was weird. Um, you should hang yourself, Santos. Fucking psycho Hispanic bastard. But yeah, man, um, 
you gotta love the you gotta love the play with uh, between the whites, the Hispanics, the Asians, and everybody else, man. We have uh, seen so much uh, shitting on each other this week that it's almost unbelievable, and it's fire. You know, you won't see that shit on Howard Stern anymore. Um, but but here we all we all hate each other equally here, and that's the funniest thing about it. Um, and you can take it from Casper, the friendly pubic haired face, that I know what I'm talking about. Okay. She got. She did get pushed because she's black. Someone says. You think so? I mean, may I mean, like, I get what you're saying, but Jesus, man. I don't know. Maybe that's what's in right now. You know what I mean? But I, I get it. I get the Hollywood agenda and all that stuff. But I, I just don't. I'm not into it. I'm not seeing that here as much. But dude, when they say that WWE is racist anymore, like, you can't even do that. Like, there's just tons of diversity everywhere in WWE. It's constantly going around everywhere. Like, it's so crazy diverse right now. You know what I mean? I, you know, you can go back to the past and say whatever you want, but, you know, pre people bring it up with Pat Patterson all the time. Pat Patterson was gay. He came out a long time ago. He, they knew he was gay, and they treated him no different. And um, who was it that said that recently? Somebody said that. It was somebody said that, and uh, I don't know if it was, it was on a podcast. He was saying, like, I saw how Vince treated Pat Patterson. And I saw how Vince treated some of the other guys. While there was racism in the locker rooms and homophobia in the locker rooms and all these things, Vince McMahon would just bring these guys in. He didn't give a damn about what you what you were or what whatever the case was. None of that went on. You know, and the guy really talked about that. And so like that just makes me think it's like Vince is also gay. No, no, but no, it's just that, you know, it, I don't know, man. I don't think it's it's hard to say. I you know we, everybody has said things about Vince and, and what they've done and, and things like that, but you constantly hear these stories from people, you know, from different backgrounds and stuff who are like, man, I got treated fine, like, and they treated me well, and like they didn't care what I was or what it was. It was all about what I could do for the product, you know. But then again, you get Coco Beware out there, fucking, uh, and then the Coco Beware doll. I don't know, but I just think that it's 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 ribbing, bro. It's it's full it's full blown ribbing. If they could rib you about your background, whatever it is, doesn't matter what your background is. If you have a stereotype or a background, they're going to rib the shit out of you, okay? If you're extra white like Seamus, they rib fucking Seamus. They rib Seamus. They call him like fucking, they've called him like glowy and like all kinds of other things because he's so pale white. Because that's just what, dude, they just rib the fuck out of you for everything. Like, dude, Mr. Pasty, somebody called, it's like, dude, they do this. And they started talking about it in the back about how they called, uh, you know, Seamus, uh, white chocolate and the other guy dark chocolate it's like they people just make when, when people love each other or don't give a shit about stuff they they talk shit like that and, and that's what it seems to be but if you find me some other examples of something worse or whatever fine but i mean i don't know why this always comes up man when somebody other than a white person wins everybody starts freaking out about all this other stuff um but yeah that's about all i got to say man and I, her, her feet didn't touch the ground it looks like from the slow-mo that i saw five three nines on the phone hello what's up joe it is downstairs. No, I'm just kidding. How are you doing, man? Pretty good. That raw was complete bullshit, man. I agree. Three out of ten for me. Yeah, I wouldn't even give it that much. That that was a fucking two, man. <laughs> I give him credit for uh, Damien, Edge, and uh, maybe the opening a little bit, and that's about it. To me, Damien, Edge, and Alexa were the only things that were even decent on that show, and then... You know how I see it happening. They're going to put Edge against McIntyre, and then they're going to. That's bring what Bullfrog in said. To fight Roman. Bullfrog said that he goes, "No, I think I think Edge is going to fight." They're trying to get Punk is what it is. That's what I think. They're trying to they get Brock. Punk no, I think Roman. I think they're trying to get Lesnar, Punk, or anybody big to come in. And you're right. I agree with you. Because there isn't a person on the SmackDown roster who they haven't shit on so much at this point to actually have them compete against the tribal chief roman i don't think this is there anybody on raw though i mean so like so we agree on this edge is going to face somebody so one match is going to be set but one match there's no one to face the other guy like we agree on that at least that there's one guy that has no opponent like because anyone on the roster right now it just doesn't work really may, unless it doesn't work it just doesn't work Right. Even if even with Edge, it really doesn't work with Roman because what's the build? Spear versus spear. Well, yeah. The, no, the build is spear versus spear. Good guy versus bad guy. You know, Edge is making his return, and I think that match is good because I think that match is like 
you know, there's going to be fans at WrestleMania allegedly, so th that will be like Triple H and Cena at WrestleMania 22. I feel like that well, that's. Well, you also have the past between McIntyre and Edge, where they were fighting right before Edge got injured. Yeah, I I, I agree, and that may still happen. But you're but uh, one thing we can agree on at least if we back up again, is we know somebody's left out. Somebody doesn't have a legitimate enough opponent. So they, I agree with you that they must be looking for somebody to come in and they, and they don't want to do Goldberg because Goldberg just can't wrestle long enough. He just can't do it. Right, not to mention he can't seem to pull off a jackhammer. He almost... Well, he's <laughs> lucky. That actually night. that impressed me because, I mean, listen, McIntyre jumped and everything and that's why he was able to do it. But, you know, yeah. you can't risk that guy going out there in a big pivotal spot. He should face Dolph Ziggler in a... I called your mom a fat face match, you know, and that's about it. Right, right. But who? So who do you want? Because I think it's either Lesnar or CM Punk. They're probably desperately offering money and trying to set stuff up with one of those guys. I want to see Lesnar or Punk, but if they have to choose someone from the roster, let's see Cesaro. Oh my God! You really, see? I think if they had, if Cesaro had been pushed back in the day and had been a strong thing and had a better mic skills. You know, I, I I would agree with you, but Cesaro to me right now, I I think that was boring. Right. I mean, what, I mean, Cesaro just is boring. But like at this point, I could actually see him beating Roman, unlike anyone else on the roster. Look at Daniel Bryan; he's been getting pinned twenty four seven. I could see Cesaro taking on Sheamus in some kind of match, but I, I no way. I I mean, listen, I like Cesaro and. If he had a better character or whatever, then I'd say maybe yeah. But he's just that's a loss. That's a that's like a right. house, that's like a house match that would happen during this time. Like, hey, look, Roman right. versus Cesaro, and he and, you know he beats him, and it's on a house card. Well, the only other person they really have is Shinsuke, and I don't see Shinsuke having another WrestleMania main event after what happened with AJ Styles. If they yeah right, it's and AJ and Seth are possible too, but you know I don't I don't think they built Seth. I don't. I think Seth is in limbo as like, oh yeah, he's still a heel, but he's kind of not really established again. And AJ Styles, exactly. is, AJ Styles doesn't want to be champion. AJ Styles would be a good match with Roman though, but oh, he'd be better with Drew. I I guess. No to fight. <laughs> well, Roman. but and isn't AJ AJ's on SmackDown too, right? No, AJ's on Raw. Oh, okay, so I don't. I didn't forget that. So you'll listen. So AJ AJ could face Drew. And that'd be a really good match, probably. And then you get Edge versus Roman. That would be if if right. I, if I had to, if they told me like right now, you told me we have to book with who is available, and that's all there is to it. You know, I'd probably go with that. But then again, Owens right. Owens had a damn good match with Roman. They could continue that story because Owens is having such good chemistry with Roman. They honestly should. That match, the ending of that was complete bullshit. Yeah. That referee just standing there like an idiot. Okay, he, he hasn't gotten it unhooked. <laughs> no, I would have completed counting, and Roman won by default due to the fact that he was already the champion. Neither I, of them were on their feet. Yeah, I would have... Um, if I was Heyman and I realized the handcuffs were giving me problems, I would have said that to the ref as I'm punching him, and I would have knocked the ref. I would have been like, dude, you got to go down for like 20 seconds. Like, and, yeah. And... I, I mean that's thinking on your feet and and maybe and you know the the count should have been at like seven when the referee got knocked. It was really funny though, man. Like that the referee getting pulled into that light at nine seconds to me, I think that was hilarious. That was hilarious. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't end up watching the rumble till this morning when my wife got off of work and she was like, Well, you know he definitely ain't getting up for the rest of the match. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was funny, man. I and listen, they did have the best match, man. That was I was I gave that I think an eight or an you know something like that with no fans. Yeah, that one got a nine from me because that that to me was literally the best match, and you never knew which one of them was actually going to stay down because Owens was coming out of everywhere. Yeah, and it was like it was like uh, Owens and Seth Rollins at WrestleMania, no fans, and they had a good little hardcore type of match. Right or The Rock and Mankind. Oh yeah, yeah. If Way you want to go, time heat. yeah, no doubt. If you go back to then, dude, the punches the guys threw back then, though, it's, it's dude, it's not even close. The punches now and stuff are just so bad. Like, but uh, listen, I appreciate the call, dude. I'm gonna let you go. Good shit. Yeah. 
All right, man. Have Thank a great you. Night. You too, man. Good stuff. Good call. That's what a good call sounds like. I forgot what those are. Thanks to Chris Caveman for subbing on Twitch, man. Chris Caveman, thank you, dude. Lots of love. So AJ has Alamas help save him and eliminate others from the rumble. Yet when Ali comes out, he's alone. So much for attribution causing chaos to the WWE. That Reigns botch last night was so bad got to six stopped and gave the sign that Roman has gotten up. <laughs> yeah, that was a little rough. Unfortunately, it soured that a little bit. That's why I gave it an eight. If they had nailed that ending, I would have given it maybe shit an eight bomb. five. Maybe a nine. You become a shit bomb. The champ is here, Bullfrog isn't seeing this belt. Oh, Casey is raw, calling that Bullfrog will never see the belt. Casey is raw, is the champ. And uh, shout out to Drew Bar, who's the king of the wheel of funk as well. Uh, thank you to Drew Bar. There's Casey with the belt. Uh, 769, what's up, man? How you been? Hey, I had been trying to get in for the longest, but it kept saying the line is busy. I'm glad I got through this time. Hell yeah, brother. Hey, I've been taking Skype calls in a while, but also today there's just, man, hundreds. There's a lot of calls. This is crazy. I'm not calling from Skype. Yeah, man, I have you, I have you down as always great caller. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to ask you something. Do you think it's too soon to put the belt on Bianca Belair or not? Yeah, I'm a little bit worried because I, obviously you want a crowd. Um, and I agree that I think her kind of going through a little more. Like, I actually said this when we were doing Royal Rumble predictions. The reason I didn't pick Bianca Belair, because I said I would pick Bianca Belair, but I think I think give her another year to, like, build herself up. And I think she wins the Rumble next year. And that's what I said. And um, then I said... I had reasons why I had Rhea Ripley winning, even though I just value what Bianca Belair could become more. I think Rhea can win right now and be this badass, but I felt like Bianca could be this kind of darling, and so I wanted her to be next year, but she wins this year. So, yeah, I I think I'm I'm wondering if she does get Sasha Banks, then I'm wondering if it's going to be kind of like Charlotte and Rhea at WrestleMania last year, where it's like, Bianca challenges her. She doesn't win, but she goes all out and looks good, I guess, but doesn't end up winning. You know, I don't know. I, maybe she does win, but she she's also popular, and she's got some steam. I just think she almost could use three more months of building herself up and having crowds there. But with crowds being at Mania this year, that may help her too, and maybe she'll have a bigger fan base, and they'll be pulling for her. So, I got to be honest, I don't know exactly what to do. If they build her up the right way over the next couple of months leading to WrestleMania, then at that time I'll say, yeah, give her the belt and let her run whatever. Or I would say, nah, man, don't don't give her the belt yet. Keep people thirsty for her and let her chase even more. And I, I think maybe would you letting... turn her heel next year if she... Um... Yeah. Would you she... turn her heel... I would have brought her. I honestly would have brought her in heel. I, I would have. I would have treated her like a heel forever until the crowd just couldn't help it and loved the hell out of her. I would have made the crowd tell me the return. You know. So you're right. I would have done what you think too. I would have done it. Like, listen, she's going to be a complete heel, and we're going to make the crowd turn for her. And then when they turn for her, we'll turn her face. But we won't Kinda do like it. the Rock. Exactly was she in um ninety seven. He was, I think it was 97, he was completely healed. And then the fans, like, that's the guy we want. The same thing can happen for Bianca. Yeah, and I think that the minute that they sniffed that she was likable, the minute that they sniffed it, they were like, oh, your face, your, your face, your face, your face. And also on top of that, her boy, her husband or boyfriend or whatever, you know, they're obviously in a face group and they wanted to put them together. And I think that's a big part of it too. With um, what are they called? Private party? No, no, I mean uh, not private party. Fucking, god damn it! What are they in the the, the fucking basically the clone of private party? The other, what are they called? I forgot the names too. See, it's because they're similar. It's like the two groups are the same. 
two guys who come out with fucking solo cups and want to party in a club. Um, shit. Street profits. Street profits. Thank you. Oh my god. I forget. Private party sounds. It's weird because private party was way more over in a way. People kind of legitimize that more, but street profits sounds way more like real badass. Private party sounds like you're about to get your ass pumped by your friend. You know, like I don't know, <laughs> like I don't know, dude. Private party, like that's very weird. Um, but they're the ones that do the crazier shit. So I, I don't know, but it just sounds weird, man. Private party sounds like yo, let's not tell anybody that we're butt pumping each other. And um, street profit just sounds like, like and powerful. Yeah, it's just weird. I mean, that's 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 not as weird, <laughs> but you know, street profit sounds like that's cool. Like oh shit, yo, right. they're the street profits. Um, all right, man. I'll talk to you later. Good shit, dude. Thanks. Another good call. The calls are lining up tonight, as always. Thank you for subscribing to the channel, Matthew. What's up, man? Good to hear from you. A lot of calls coming in. It's been a while since we've taken calls. Oh, my God, no! Oh. Did you just donate to Joe? <coughs> Did you just donate to Joe? Thank you for the donation. And because you donated, Ooh. I'm going to feast myself in the bunghole. <laughs> Private parts. <gasps> Private parts of me. <laughs> Luis Antonio Alejandro says, I, I was, was just kidding about Roman Reigns for Goldberg. I want Roman Reigns to face Daniel Bryan. Uh, Bill Goldberg. Bill Goldberg. Bill Goldberg. Oh, F. Donald Trump says Luis Antonio Alejandro. Thank you, Luis Antonio Alejandro. Okay, you were just kidding about it. It's a big troll. My God, Luis Antonio Alejandro, you hilarious troll bag. I love you, and thanks for being a $25 producer, man. Couldn't do the shows without guys like Luis Antonio Alejandro. As fun as he is, man, you got to give it to him, man. Without him, we'd be screwed here on the Joe Cronin Show. Um, let's just go Alejandro so we don't have to fill this whole thing in, right, Luis? El Alejandro. And we'll go $15. That is the largest donation of the stream. Shout out to Luis Antonio Alejandro for being the top dog. The top perro. Appreciate it, bro. Appreciate that a lot, dude. Thank you so much, brother. Lots of donations, lots of calls. Shit bomb! Monday Night Raw tonight. The commentary needs to go. A shit bomb. Fuck commentary tonight. Uh, JCS Foot Rub, thanks for the $2. Uh, Getty Lee's Owl says, Trump living rent-free in people's heads. Yeah, you would think that they would get over it. I mean, he's not the president anymore. We're still Trump this, Trump that. Oh, my God, bro. You know that Joe Biden like is a super racist and he's your president right now? Maybe you should focus on him now. Luis Antonio Alejandro, maybe you should start attacking Joe Biden and Kamala Harris because they're some of the biggest racists too. So Why like, do you have the niece loving horse fucking handicapped piece of shit cracker jack did you noble fag as chicken aids and loves the taste of horse semen? <laughs> oh my god. AJ Adams, you know why AJ Adams? You know, you know, I monetized this AJ Adams eight months ago. Bullfrog was banned. People spent three thousand dollars on my show to ban Bullfrog, like almost three thousand dollars. Not quite three thousand, but almost. AJ Adams, do you realize that? And he, he wants to come back to monetize this, but he's going to have to make up the money because people donated that money, man. So I won't bring him back unless he can come up with that money to, so I can pay back the people that got him blocked. So he's already banned from Monetize This, at least. I just did the gayest pose. Oh. Real Dick Fish says, Fuck this show. I got your real dick. I get it. I agree, man. I'm going three out of ten. I, listen, other people are giving it worse than that. I'm giving it a three out of ten. You know, and that's only because I thought it did have a little bit of flow. You know, to the to the flow of the show, at least the way they they had everything rolling and, and booked and everything. So that's the one thing I'll say. I guess it sort of went. Drew by. is going to face Lashley at WrestleMania. Look how they are building him as this monster. Yeah. He will drop his title to Riddle probably due to Cedric Alexander doing something as a distraction and win the chamber match. Oh, Sheamus my God. is just filler until then. 
Oh, TJ Jones, you're right. I saw that on Twitter tonight. A lot of people think it's Bobby Lashley. I forgot all about that. You're right. I mean, or he's the backup. Bobby Lashley's the backup in case they can't get somebody else. TJ Jones. TJ knows wrestling on YouTube. Oh, man. I mean, listen, I like Bobby Lashley and Impact. I just don't. Man, that match against Drew will be boring. That will be boring. Super boring. Hey, did you all see the news about the crazy anti-vax COVID deniers protesting at LA Dodgers Stadium where people are driving to get the vaccine? These are truly some of the most awful brainwashed people ever and they deserve to get coronavirus. Uh, wormhole. Thank you, Wormhole. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, if you don't believe in COVID or you don't believe in the vaccine or you don't want to get the vaccine, it's like, dude, don't get the vaccine, but don't don't block other people from getting it. You know what I mean? They're probably there trying to help because if they if they don't think it's a good thing and they see all these signs that it's manipulation and stuff, I get that they're there with signs trying to warn people and stuff. But yeah, I don't know, man. Just, I don't know, man. Everybody should let everybody do what, what they feel they want to do. You know what I mean? If you don't want to get it, you don't you don't need to get it. If you want to get it, you should be able to get it. You know, whatever you want. Whatever you want to do based on what you see about the facts and what you think is best for your life, go for it, you know? But don't stop other people from getting it. And don't force other people to get it. That's pretty... I, I mean, that's, to me, is fucking self-explanatory. But I guess some people are nuts. Shit bomb! You become... A shit bomb. Ooh, JCS Curling foot rub. The hashtag fact. Hashtag fact, baby. That's old school right there. Remember when WWE took that and gave it to Tyson Kidd? He stole my fact. That was fucking crazy, dude. They stole my fact, and then they stole Cesaro ripping his clothes off. So clearly the writer, right, that wrote for Tyson Kidd in them was watching me. We said that back in the day, though. It's kind of funny. I wonder who it was. I always wonder who it was. Oh shit, Shell! Six oh one, hang on the phone. You're on hold. That's all I got. Stop punching my car. Stop punching my car. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Raw sectors always thank God for your reviews, Joe. Yo! Still having problems with my fucking eyes, so not in the oh. chat again this week. Oh, and it's called speech to text in case people still wondering how I can type if I can't see well. LOL. Right. Shell, thank you so much. Um, Yeah, I was wor I was thinking about you the other day. I was like, man, I wonder if Shell's okay. She's like her eye, and I knew you haven't been back in a while, so I was worried. Um, I hope that gets better for you. That's just It's just crazy. That you have to deal with that, and I get it, cause you know me, I am with my shit. Man, Shell is dealing with some crazy shit with her eyes, as always. She's been dealing with it for years, and we've known about it here. Tons of hospital visits. I love you, Shell. Thank you. Hope everything's going well. Shell with the venti uno. Let's go. Uh, let's. Uh, Shell is now the top dog. Thank you, Shell. Uh, let me go back over to the phones. Shell, thank you so much. That is the top donation. 601's on the phone. What's up, 601? Hey, Joe. What's going on? This is CJ. Oh, shit, dude. What's going on? Hey, man. How you doing? Uh, well, listen yeah, up, you goddamn... Call... No, just... <laughs> <laughs> uh... Yeah, I just, just wanted to call in, my friend, man. Just let you know you're doing an outstanding job, man. Really enjoy the content. and You know, uh, I just wanted to kind of uh, talk a little bit about some two of the uh, donations that I uh, dropped off. Um, the, the question I was just asking about, uh, you know, AEW, I asked you, like, did you grade on a curve? Yeah. You know, I mean, when you're dealing with a new company, I mean, you've got a lot of new faces people never even heard of, you know, and it takes them time to develop. So, and also you got new story uh, writers and you got, you know, new storylines and stuff like that. So I was just wondering, like, you know, do you take that into account, you know, and, and versus, you know, WWE has been around for years and, 
I mean, they're making mistake after mistake. So that was that was uh, my yeah, thought pattern behind the first place. Well, they've got the advantage. AEW has the advantage of being new, right? Because it's like, all right, I'm not sick of this yet. So they do have that. They have a slight advantage, probably. But you know, again, it's so many other things. I I try to. I try to look at it the same. I mean, we've had some bad nights on AEW, and I'm like, man, it was like a five or a six. But you know, I don't really, I don't. I guess I don't give them extra credit, but but they they get extra credit um, just by the fact that it's still new, you know. And I, and I think now with being outside with the big atmosphere and you can hear people in the crowd still makes it feel right. like I feel like anything can happen in AEW right. where I don't feel that way about WWE. Right. Yeah. I mean, I agree with you. You know, no doubt about that. You know, I I understand. You know, AEW. They seem like they're a little bit more of some risk takers. It seems like WWE is more, you know, stationary. Oh, we're the top dog. Uh, we don't have to, you know, we don't have to make all these different changes. I mean, the, the ratings are uh, going to keep coming in. The money is going to keep coming in. So, but uh, also uh, about Bobby Lashley, man. I know you say you're not a big fan of that, but it really seems like they're going in that direction. You know, WWE always has this tendency of having that high-profile main event. They always probably bring, like, a part-timer in and take on their top star. And then they always probably have, like, you know, two uh, full-time workers going for the other championship. I mean, we've seen this with uh, Shinsuke Nakamura and AJ Styles one year. And then we've seen Brock Lesnar taking on Roman Reigns. And like I said, you see how they booked uh, Bobby Lashley, even last night. I mean, he looked dominant in the Royal Rumble. It took four guys to eliminate him. And then tonight, he just basically was, like, uncontrollable, like, you know, knocking over Riddle and not listening to MVP. And it just seems like they're trying to, like, build him up to be this monster heel, believable to a point where he can be a, a viable threat to Drew McIntyre's title. Like, I feel like with the Sheamus thing, yeah. I think they – are just using this as filler, you know. I mean, you pretty much seen this coming. I mean, the fights backstage and Sheamus acting like he just buddy buddy with Drew. I mean, you kind of seen this coming. Yeah. So I just feel like a couple of months away from WrestleMania, um, it, it seems to me like you know they just need this uh, storyline to be over, give Drew something to do in the meantime, and also just build up Drew, uh, build up Bobby Lashley to a point where people actually believe that. Uh, you know, and I, and I also believe, like, looking at uh, with Cedric Alexander tonight with uh, Sheldon Benjamin, look, I know this might sound crazy as well, but don't be surprised if Keith Lee ends up joining the Hurt Business, like, if they end up, like, getting rid of Sheldon Benjamin somehow. Yeah. Because, you know, you look at Shel Cedric Alexander, he's the, he's the young guy that they're trying to build up, and Keith Lee is kind of in limbo right now. So how good would that be if Cedric Alexander was to team up with with uh, Keith Lee, you know what I'm saying, that's this tag team and have Bobby Lashley, I don't know, be WWE champion. You know what I'm saying? You solidify the Hurt Business as a, yeah. as a faction. I mean, and also you give Keith Lee something to do alongside MVP. And, uh, you know, MVP has done a good job making Bobby yes. Lashley's career a little bit better. I mean, M Bobby MVP has been MVP has been one mm -hmm. of the best guys. MVP has been yeah, one of the biggest assets and one of the best guys on the show oh, yeah. for the last year, year and a half. He he really oh, yeah. helped. He helped all these guys. And you're right. If they if they started a faction where Bobby Lashley's a double champion and they're just running, and this is what we wanted though months ago. But they kept doing the thing with the the hurt business where it was like, oh, they're real serious and real tough and badass. But then they'd lose and then they win. Then they lose. They lose. They lose. They win. And it was like, dude, why not make these guys crazy unstoppable and make them like? There's a reason they're taking over. Like they're they are better than like retribution, so that's good. But right. keep pushing them, right. man, because I I do want that about Bobby Lashley. I do want I want Bobby Lashley from Impact, where he felt like this right. badass like star or, or MMA star. Um, I'm just mm -hmm. I'm just worried that you know I don't know what the chemistry is going to be like in the ring with Drew and Bobby. You know we may get a, a match that isn't the best. I think Bobby Lashley versus AJ Styles could be awesome. Drew McIntyre versus AJ Styles could be awesome, but Drew versus Bobby, yeah. I don't know. But dude, listen, if, the, if Joe, let me say, let me say this real quick, Joe. Yeah. Um, uh, look, I know a lot of people aren't a fan, but these two fought before. You know, when Drew with Drew Galloway, you know, uh -huh. in, in uh, Impact, and he took on Bobby Lashley. And yeah. from what I heard, they had some pretty good matches, good solid yeah. matches. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, so I, I don't know, uh, I don't know. I, I, I know that they're going to try to move the, the way that they position Riddle in the Royal Rumble. Riddle, like. Riddle kind of, like, I know everybody has their, their, their gripes about, like, his character 
But in the Royal Rumble, like, he really stood out. I mean, him going toe-to-toe with Daniel Bryan, him going toe-to-toe with Cesaro, him going toe-to-toe with Seth Rollins. And then tonight, there was, like, kind of, like, at the beginning of the match, you seen, like, a, a kind of a, you know what I'm saying, like a different side of Matt Riddle. So I just feel like they're going to try to probably give him the United States Championship because if not now, when? And you want to probably try to transition uh, Bobby Lashley away from the United States title to put him in title contention to take on Drew McIntyre. Like, I'm just interested to see how they're going to build Bobby Lashley to a point where people will actually believe that he can take the, the title away from Drew McIntyre, but I definitely feel like that's the direction they're going to go in, Joe. I think you're right. I think the only way it doesn't happen is if they get some, if, they're, if they really are trying to actively get somebody else in, I could see them mm-hmm. going with that person, like Brock or whoever. Oh, no. But right. I, yeah, but I do hope that they build Lashley if they're going to do that, because otherwise... I don't know, man. They haven't done the best job with Bobby, unfortunately. And we thought we, they were going to. We were, couldn't wait till he got – when he got hired, we couldn't wait to see what they were going to do with Bobby Lashley. Like, And right. they sort of just brought him right back into WWE Bobby Lashley. He's not this amazing right. – he should have came in like this amazing guy with this reputation. He's so badass and he's going to be unstoppable. He's a powerhouse, all these things. But they brought him right back into like Bobby, Bobby Lashley WWE version, but yet in Impact Wrestling – the guy was a damn star, and I really enjoyed watching him. And something about the smaller ring, smaller guys, Bobby Lashley just felt big, man. He felt really good. Like, And I was a fan of him where I hadn't been before, so I wanted that version to be in WWE. So if we can get that going forward, then I will be on board with that match. Yeah, that's the, that's the way that WWE does it, though, Joe. You know, any yeah. type of uh, buildup that other wrestling promotions have, created these superstars they, they want to put their own wwe spin on it i mean you talked about this how much you love the matt hardy uh gimmick right when he was broken matt hardy and right. right and we expected him to come to wwe and kind of feed off that momentum but wwe wanted to do their version of broken matt hardy so i just feel like sometimes uh you you have to live by that moniker if it ain't broke don't fix it if you would have came in and, and had bobby last last this monster heel somebody that you can be like, man, I can see him taking on Brock Lesnar one day. And I know that's always the talk, but let's just be serious about this. Like, if Brock Lesnar was to take on Bobby Lashley, that wouldn't sell many tickets as you think because of how they watered down Bobby Lashley. Like I said, you have a few months for WrestleMania. I mean, you have an opportunity uh, to try to build him up, you know what I'm saying, and make him credible. Mm -hmm. Look, you need to get him away from uh, losing matches and all type of crazy hijinks. And have him out here as this serious threat. Like, go out here, kick ass, you know what I'm saying, beat, beat people down, and, and just look like this unstoppable heel. Put him in some matches where you can really showcase his skill set. You know, allow him to, you know, continue to do the things he did with MVP tonight. You know, like, like I've never seen this side of him. I mean, MVP did a good job building him up. Continue to go in that type of direction. And I think round time mania comes when he takes on Drew McIntyre. You're like, oh, snap, I think we got something special here, man, even if he wins or loses. Yeah, and I don't know, and I think I, I do think possibly that he would lose, maybe, and that they would. Uh, but Drew's been champion for so long, you know, he won at the last right. WrestleMania, so maybe you do take it off him and you and you give this heel faction, like you said, this big run. Anyway, uh, now right. you're, you're doing wrestling again on YouTube, but you're are you still doing the radio gig? Yeah, man, that's the reason why. You know, I, I mean, look, I'm you know I'm passionate about wrestling. I've been a wrestling fan a, a long time. But, you know, I, I took on the job at the radio station. Then I got promoted to a producer as well as an on-air personality. So it, it took up a lot of my time. And I also was doing a sports podcast as well. Now, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, an NFL season is pretty much, you know, kind of over. I still need some things to do. So I wanted to do a podcast, get back into something that I'm passionate about, you know, which is wrestling. And, you know, I, I want to do something, like, kind of different. I know you do, you know, your, the predictions and, and also the reviews after every show. I mostly focus on, like, profiling different wrestlers. Like, you know, I pick a wrestler, like, from my childhood, a modern-day wrestler, and I probably go about 25, 30 minutes talking about that particular wrestler. And, um, you know, just try to, you know, get people, you know, introduce them to them for the younger uh, generation and also just uh, for the older generation to take a trip down memory lane, man. So really excited about the project. Want to get you on there, man, because, you know, to talk a little bit about wrestling also. know you've been a wrestling fan since you were a kid just like me, and, I'm just excited about it, Joe, you know, just yeah. uh, something I really love to do. Yeah, man, um, I'll definitely come on. And I, I was doing something recently where I'm doing, like, 
five to ten minute videos about like moments, just any moment that right. ever happened, you know. So I had fun with those. So I think you'd have fun doing a, a profile thing like that, and maybe even like their right. best moments in the profile. Like, right. hey, next time we're gonna talk about we talked about Edge for thirty minutes here, but you know we're gonna right. look at that moment. You know, you could do things like that too. Like I I listen to that right. so. Yeah, man. Let yeah, me know. That, that's awesome, Joe. And, and like I said, it's it's just a it's a passionate rest, uh, wrestling show. You know, like it, it's not like so much about oh this guy sucks. This is the reason why he sucks. You know, like like it, it's more like you know a, a passionate wrestling fan. You know, going back to those days when we're sitting on the floor, you know, watching wrestling and and watching Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, two larger than life characters, WrestleMania six, and just taking people back to those points. You know, and also like just. Just talking about some of the top matches of the of, of the respected superstar that I profile on that day. So it, it's going to be a little bit much more than just you know just uh, profiling a person's history. Also, just to tell people how that person may or may uh, you know me feel at that particular time. Like we profiled Chris Benoit on the last episode, no. and you know talk about some of the matches that we had. You know, they, I mean that he had throughout his career, and just also man, just the the, the tragic end of his life. You know, but. You know, but at the end of the day, you know, we, we hate that it happened. But at the same time, man, we, we love Chris Benoit for his, 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 the way that he went into the ring. He left it all in the ring. He wanted to be a perfectionist and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I broke it down, you know what I'm saying, as, as a young fan. You know what I'm saying? A young fan in me that used to watch Chris Benoit and tried to, like, slowly, as, as best as I can, try to remove uh, the tragic uh, couple weeks, you know, that last weekend of his life. But... You know, so that's that's what we're looking for here. Just just passionate talk about you know, some he's, of the greatest uh, moments in, in wrestling. Chris Benoit is in I, I hate triple uh triple threat matches and his right. match with Shawn Michaels and Triple H at WrestleMania is like gotta be one of the best triple threat matches I ever liked. Uh, I don't know. I love that right. match. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely one of, one of my favorite matches of all time. You know, WrestleMania twenty and that triple threat match and just just the man, just the if you think about it, just the ride of uh, Chris Benoit's career. You know, being that guy who was never big enough, a guy that idolized, uh, you know, Tom Billington, the Dynamite Kid, and just some of the greatest matches. It, it's so unfortunate, you know. what I'm saying that like, he's been part of some of the greatest matches of all time, but we 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 cringe sometimes, Joe. You know, just talking about this guy. Yeah, you know, it's hard to talking do it. about. We, we, <laughs> it's almost like you know, I, I wanna I wanna like feel like I did when I first saw this match, but. In the back of your mind, you're thinking about what he did to Nancy, you know what I'm saying, and his son, and his, uh, it's just crazy, man. But like I said, uh, very, very passionate podcast, man. Uh, you know, anybody that want to check it out, please do. And, you know, I, I appreciate yeah. the time, Joe. All right, man. TJ, thank you, man. TJ Knows Wrestling. Check out his podcast. He's also on the radio, if you ever hear TJ. Um, I don't know if he wants that Shout it out or if he cares, but you can always hit me up, and I'll always plug that, too. Um. Yeah, I, you know, I just think that, you know, Benoit, I don't think Benoit was Benoit. I think he, his mind was melting down, and he was becoming psychotic, and I think he he did something that he wouldn't have done if he wasn't having brain meltdown. So, you know, that's what I think. I think if the guy didn't have a brain that was mangled, and he did it, I don't think I would revere him the way I would. If, if Chris Benoit of sound and mind said, you know, fuck my family and fuck this, I don't want my kid living like this and my wife, whatever, I'm going to kill us all, like whatever. You know, then I would, I would, I probably would, wouldn't be able to talk or praise the guy at all. Even his wrestling, I wouldn't even be able to deal with it. I'd be like, forget that. But I don't see it that way. I see it as like that guy's brain melted down and he did some horrific thing because he went crazy in his brain. And that happens. It's a real thing. So I don't. You know, I think that it's just unfortunate and weird, and um, but I'm still gonna just treat his wrestling like his wrestling. You know what I mean? There, there's a million actors and actresses who have done terrible things, terrible things to children, terrible things in real life, and you guys watch. We watch their movies all the time, and we never think about it. We never care about it. They beat their wives. They beat their kids. They r- rape people. They do all kinds of stuff. You know, they and we watch their movies and we don't even think about it. We don't even mention it. We go, well, I'm not going to watch their movies. You know, some people do, but most people don't. So it's the same thing. It's like, well, I'm still going to watch his matches. I'm still even going to be like, this guy was sick. I mean, he was great in the ring. It's just, it's sad and weird and crazy what happened at the end and horrific. You know, but it, but if you didn't have a mangled brain and you were like, you know what, fuck this, and you went and hurt your family, 
that'd be a different story. I'd be like, you know what, 100% fuck that guy's career, and I can't even, I'll never, you know, give that guy any love. I am going to be talking a lot about BlizzCon coming up. And um, I'm, I'm happy for Bianca Belair. Super happy for Bianca Belair. I've, I've, dude, I've loved Bianca Belair since NXT. The only thing that makes me sad about the whole thing is I friggin' wish that there was a, there was, there had been a crowd for all this stuff and to see how they would be reacting to Bianca Belair out in the audience. That's the only thing. I praise, dude, I, 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 I haven't, probably Bianca, probably Sasha Banks was the last person that I had like a a stiffy for uh, as far as, not like that, but although, yeah, but not like that, but you know, that I, I, I just was like, I fucking love this person, bring them up to the main roster, you know, um, just Bianca Belair has been great. She was great in NXT, I thought, but I thought she was going to be better on the main roster because her wrestling style is more main roster style. And she's got a, just a character about her. So, happy about that. Um, you know, Edge, I think, is a good... We picked him to win the Rumble. It's so weird. We pretty much, you know, set the whole thing up the way it, the way it went. You know, I mean, it made sense. What else were they going to do? We thought that there might be returns is the only thing. And we didn't get some returns that we thought we would have or surprises and stuff like that. That's That's the stuff that we were missing out on. I thought we were going to see more Christian stuff maybe tonight. You know, I thought even Christian was going to come out during the Edge stuff, but I don't know what Christian's going to do. But yeah, I guess he's got a part-time deal as well. Shit bomb! You become Randy Viper. A shit bomb. What's up, Randy? I'm calling it noted down. Dot Miz will cash in mania. Miz will cash in at mania. Uh, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right because of the lack of stuff going on. It will be the first time we have a crowd, right? First time we have a crowd, the lack of things going on, and what if there is no crowd tomorrow? So they're going to want to get that bomb. pop. So you might be. You become yeah. a shit bomb. 100% probably right. I would I would agree that there's a strong chance of a cash in at WrestleMania. Very strong chance. Because they're going to want to get that pop in front of the people. And you know those wrestling fans are going to be going off. You know what I mean? You know those people are going to be fucking going off. Dude, we're finally out of the house. We're finally at a wrestling show. We're at WWE. We're at WrestleMania. The fans are going to freak out. As shitty as the money in the bank has been. Excuse my fantasy booking, but you think there's a chance Priest and Orton have a match at Mania? Oh, man. I think it's coming down to the fiend in order to WrestleMania, Robbie Hyde. I think we are definitely coming down to the fiend in, in order to WrestleMania. So I don't think he's going to be doing anything with Damian Priest. The story continues with the fiend, and I don't know what's going to be coming. But they're obviously keeping him off TV for a big, you know, this big return and tease. They're going. They're, they're sort of going a little bit of Kane Undertaker WrestleMania 14 here a bit with the supernatural stuff, the set him on fire thing. This story is going to be crazy epic by the time we get to shit WrestleMania. Bomb! You become a shit bomb. What up, JCS Foot Rub? What is your favorite Royal Rumble Cronin? That's hard, man. It's always, I think it's the Shawn Michaels ones where he won. The two Shawn Michaels rumbles where he won, the Ric Flair one, and probably Stone Cold Steve Austin winning in 1998. Those are probably my favorite rumbles. You know, and then like one back in the day with Hogan. But, you know, I would say that those are, there, there may be another one that I'm missing, you know, for another reason that I can't, I, I don't know.
J.D. Venom. J.D. Venom tipped $5. Goldberg has had nine matches since returning to WWE in 2016. His total match time in all nine matches 29 minutes 10 sex. Edge's match alone at last year's WrestleMania was 36 to 35. In other words, wow. go spear a bullet in the head, Goldberg. Yeah, Goldberg. Uh, and that match, Edge Edge's match was way too long, way too long. <laughs> JD Venom, thank you, JD Venom. Fuck Karen. Fucking mood tonight. Private Cocker and Twat tip three dollars. Oh. Oregano Esedemas. Ni hao. What about the Koreans Cronin you fuck? Ni Where hao. is my Yobesio? By the way, guys, subscribe to the gatekeeper <laughs> Drew at D Railed News and Podcasts. Oh. Awesome show last night. There was a bullfrog army takeover. Hostage. Shit bomb! Fuck Thank Monica you. Slob. You become a shit bomb. Fuck Monica. My pick was Biggie. Then we get Roman versus Biggie. Yeah, uh, the villain. What's up, villain? Thank you, man. And th- uh, you know, I, my, I had Biggie on my top five, but uh, I think I, I we had Edge, Daniel Bryan, Biggie, and Randy, and somebody else. Brock, I think. If Brock showed up, we were very concerned Brock was going to show up. I, I get the Biggie. I, you know. Did was, you just donate to Joe? I was with you on that. Did one. you just donate to Joe? He did. Thank you for the donation. Let me read it. And because you donated, I'm going to feast myself in the bunghole. <laughs> oh. Randy Viper tipped three dollars. Nikki J says he has proof Bullfrog is a pedo and he has proof from Dave Rose lol. I called him out. He said I was talking shit to him. Hmm. He is slandering in my eyes. Hey, Nikki, cut that shit out saying I support pedophilia when I donate to Bullfrog. Wow. The weed god going after Randy Viper. Nikki J, the weed god. Long time, you know, god of JCS. You know, one of the gods here. Thank you, Nikki J. Gatekeeper Drew just resubbed on Twitch 29 months in a row. Holy crap, Drew. Thank you, Drew. Thanks, brother. I heard Drew got drunk the other night and uh, went after the entire community. Heard you were talking shit about people, Drew. They're going to come after you. I don't know what I just did. I'm sorry. <laughs> Colonel Santos tipped $3. Uh, hey, Cronin, first of all, I am not Hispanic. I am Filipino. What's up? I am Asian. I got banana skin with a small peepee like that chingy eyed edge view. Oh. I hate on my own people how you hate on your own people, allegedly. Go fuck yourself, AJ Adams, you sewage turdy spook. Oh, my God. Colonel Santos, you son of a bitch. No, nah, Colonel Sanders, what's up, man? And shout out to the Koreans, too. I'm sorry I left the Koreans out. I don't know why that is that I, l- I leave Koreans out. I think the language is harder for me. That Honestly, that's what it is, bro. You know, Japanese, you know, I can I know the words a little bit, and I can figure stuff out. You know, Chi- Chinese, Mandarin, no, no, like a tiny little slice. But, you know, Korean, I don't know. I don't know any Korean. So that's really all it is. You know, in Spanish, obviously, I know a little bit of that. Just a little bit, you know. But uh, that's about it, bro. I'm kind of stupid. I'm kind of an idiot. So I am sorry for leaving the Koreans out. And uh, Filipino, I'm sorry for confusing you. You're right. I didn't know you were Filipino, though. I thought you were for sure. Um, Like Puerto Rican, to be honest. So I am sorry about that. We love you, though, no matter what you are. Filipino, huh? Hmm. Man, you ever seen this? Some Filipino women that, yeah. By the way, I finished my uh, table the other. Did you guys see this? I spent uh, a couple of days working on this end table. I would give it a D minus. I'm gonna have to go and give it a. I'm gonna have to give it a D minus. It has problems, you know. But uh, 
little end table. Yeah, I, I'm surprised I was even able to construct this, to be honest. So, you know, this may look like shit, and it may not have been the best build, but the fact that I was able to cut the wood and put it all together and do all the standing and drill pocket holes that didn't fall apart, you know, I'm, I'm actually surprised I was able to put this together. I would have thought this would have come out looking like a mongoloid fucking truck or just something, like, fucked up, like a big piece of shit. You know, something that looks like shitty abstract art. So the fact that it actually doesn't wobble and everything was right, and all I had was a goddamn circular saw, um, you know, I'll give myself a D-plus on that. But that's me. Also, my dog has been hunting my cat. Like, all day. This went on for three hours. My dog hunting the cat. So bizarre. I got to show this to you guys. This, this All day this went on. The same thing. The dog would... Melly... You, you know my dog, Melly. She'd just be like... And then she'd come up behind the cat like this. And just, like, wouldn't stop staring at the cat and chasing around and staring at her and all kinds of shit. Just weird. I'm like, is she going to eat the cat? Like, very prey-like mentality. Look, look at this. <laughs> Me and Gavin were dying because, like, the dog just wouldn't stop staring at the cat. Oh my There's God. the table there, right there, by the way. Melly. <laughs> Every second, she's like a statue. Maybe or something would make sense. It's a cat. <laughs> oh my God, Melly. You're so funny. Hey, J.D., now I get a cat. My cat will kill your cat. How long is this going to go on for? Josh! Josh! What's this going to go on for? I've been down here for like an hour now. I'm going to die. <laughs> Melly, go lay down. Oh, go lay down, nice. Melly. She I think there's too much crap. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Don't play with the wire. Oh, yeah, she'll bite wires. No wires. She's, Melly, go lay down. She kind of, like, bites wires, but then she doesn't. Melly, go lay down. Shh. Melly, down. Shh. Well, it, well, it Melly. doesn't take that long to get picked with <laughs> She's still staring at it. However, she, like, bites it. However, you need to do it to, like, a certain set of wires. Huh? Do it now! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that went on all day, man. That went on all day. And I'm like watching because I'm afraid the dog is going to eat the cat or something. And I'm like, dude, what are you looking at? I put this on Twitter too. Like, after an hour and 45 minutes of wrestling talk, I'm finally ready to talk about my cat and my dog. Look, look at this. Uh-oh. Still going on. She wants to, like, sniff. This is, like, three hours of this. Stressed out dog. She wants to, like, sniff her there. Yeah, but, like, it was a mean sniff. Uh, that was a weird Melly, sniff. Melly, stop it. It seems like... It's weird. It's so weird, because... It seems like she was so, like, a blow. She was, what like... She freaks Melly out. It still it's continues. Like it just continues and continues and continues. Jesus, it's just a cat already. And continues. Oh. It just so wouldn't stop. Lay so this is actually a great Melly, come lay down. Oh, wait, there's a hole now. Want to go out, Melly? She's just locked on this cat. Like, I'm not going away. Like, this cat, what is going on here? It's just so weird. <laughs> I lost it though, dude. It was just too funny. Like I'm like, what? And then finally, the then finally, Finn scared the cat. Like Finn went up and scared the cat, and that caused the cat to run. And then Melly chased the cat. Finally, like, and we got a chase. Pixie doesn't know where she wants to go. It's so weird. It's like, uh oh. Oh, oh. oh my god. <laughs> 
Now, everybody missed it, but the damn cat, as she was getting close to the stairs, there's all the tiles near the stairs. The cat was running so fast she slid and did that thing animals do where they slide completely and then hit the wall. So she slid like three feet, then smashed into the wall, and then ran up the stairs. And that's what I was laughing at. And damn it, I didn't get it on tape because it was or video because it was hilarious. And unfortunately, we didn't get it. It was great. You would have loved it. And we didn't get it on tape. It was funny. But anyway, that's about it. As far as anything else I have to say, um, this is what I thought of Raw. You know, not very good. Three, four out of ten. And again, I want to thank everybody who signed back up on Patreon. Thanks to Drew Barr 100, who is the king of the wheel. There's Casey is Raw holding the monetize this championship. Shout out to Jay, who became a $25 producer on Patreon. The Patreon link is up above. If we get back to 300 patr 350 patrons, I'm going to do a 10-hour stream. And if we get up to uh, potentially 400 patrons again, I am going to do the insane of another 24-hour stream. But a real tw it's going to have to be a full 24 hours. Full 24-hour stream if we hit 400 patrons again. 10-hour stream, we hit 350. And, of course, all the bonus content coming to Patreon over the next couple of days. Check out Patreon. Make sure you guys re-up if you can't. This is the day everybody gets charged and stuff, so your cards may have had problems today or yesterday or tomorrow. So some people maybe didn't get the uh, alert uh, or didn't get the alert that I was live tonight for Raw. When you're a patron, you get all the alerts to Raw and all the alerts that I went live on Patreon. Plus, you get all the bonus content and shows we do on Patreon. Uh, damn, Mr. Crisp. Mr. Crisp becoming a producer. Thank you, sir. Went up to the $25 producer spot. Thank you, man. We got Jay there, and now Crisp is there as well. Thank you, Crisp. Aaron Embry is back, $2 patron. And Jazzy Utah went up to the $5 spot. So shout-out to Jazzy Utah and Bad Omen for going up as well. And everybody else who's back, Ivan Martinez is back. Gordon Martinez is back. Two Martinez. They may be related because they both back-to-back. -back, so if you are, thank you. Cole Springs, $10 VIP. Thank you. And uh, the dog is obsessed. Yeah, I'm, I'm worried she's going to eat him. That's my thing. Dude, what if she eats the damn dog? Like, I'm worried she's going to eat the cat or something like that. That's, like, what I was really freaking out over. Shit bomb! You Ivan Castillo. A shit bomb. Ra, 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 ra. Ra, 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 ra. Back. <laughs> ra, ra, ra. I don't think I have that set up yet on Patreon, but, uh, Ivan, thanks for the donation, man. <laughs> ra. Is there anything we can play of Ryback that can, uh, play us out of the show? Um, you know, I don't know. Is there something we can play of the show? Shout out to Shell, who is the top dog, by the way. Is there something we can shell? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Oh, God. Uh, when I get messages from Leah, I know it's about the kids or somebody woke up. Jesus. Um. Okay, let's see here if we got it. Let's see if we can pull it up. Thank you guys for the donos tonight, by the way, man. And hope Jake is all right, man. I hit him up, but uh, he se he seems like he does have power. It was just the cable and internet that was out. The big storm over here, man. I got to go. I'm actually, when I'm done this, I'm going out to shovel. <laughs> I got to go outside and shovel, man. Or this is all going to freeze to shit all night. So, man, I don't know, dude. I'm, I'm about to get bundled up and, and go outside in the cold, freezing, and I'm going to throw some headphones on and... I don't know what I'm going to listen to a podcast or I'm going to listen to something, you know. I'm, I'm going to have my podcast up tomorrow too, by the way, everybody that asks questions. Uh, I'm going to talk about your questions and some things that are going on in the weird world of entertainment, games, movies. Me and Jake talked about Mortal Kombat and a bunch of stuff a couple weeks ago on our two-hour podcast. We've done another one since then, but the one from a couple weeks ago was two hours. And if you missed it, you should check it out because there's just so much shit that we talked about. I don't think we got I don't think we got to do as much the next time, but the fact that we did a lot, it's like there's so much shit to talk about. So definitely check that out. Um now I don't see um 
I thought I had a I thought I had a funny clip, but I'm starting to think I don't now. Let me see. Did you shoot me? No! I swear to God, if you don't stop, I will shoot you, Joe Cronin. <laughs> it's not that one. Come on, don't do that to me. I'm coming for you. No. Oh no. Is this it? End the fuck over. Um, um, but no, he still didn't want to do that. Yeah, because <laughs> nothing you were saying was logical. Chat party. Oh my god, I'm crying. Spaz right Phoenix. JD would be Ryback's prison wife. <laughs> oh my god. Get down. Shut up. What are you doing, bro? What are you doing to me, bro? Shut the fuck up. Shut your mouth. What's your name? <laughs> Wait, tell me what's your name. Uh, my name is JD. I'm right. Shut the fuck up. But you told me, shut up. Bend over. I want you to bend the fuck over. <laughs> um, uh, my, my cat's on my lap, though. I don't want to bend over. Shut up and bend over. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, my God, my, a my ass. My ass. What are you doing to my ass? Oh, uh, yeah. No. Oh, shell shock. Finish it. Oh my god, don't finish it. Please don't finish it. I'm gonna finish it. What? Where are you I'm from? Your voice. I have had Dunkin' Donuts coffee. <laughs> I have had Malibu. I have had Jack Daniels. Ask her if you could shit on her face. And I want to fucking tell you so. I will tell you everything I know <laughs> about AIDS. <laughs> 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 about, about AIDS. AIDs. Like AIDs. Alright, that was dumb, but I fucking Yo, swear to God. Nice. No, but really, I worked in, in a fucking hospital for three years. Now I'm a physical therapist. I quit my old job. I used to be in... I used to be in a business. The business, if you know what I mean. And now <laughs> I work in the medical facility, the medical <laughs> lab, the and I just drink. Business. And tonight I'm lonely. She fucking... Every single week, I, I had a girlfriend... Oh, and she what? was like, this is bullshit, you know. She's like, I'm going to leave. And I'm like, well, go ahead and fucking leave, you fucking stupid asshole. And there he goes. <laughs> it all goes out the fucking window. Why? Because Rycock can't fucking get it right. Apparently, finish it. <laughs> finish it. <laughs> Listen, what I'm trying to tell you is tonight I want to get on top of you. And I want you to fucking... You've been watching way too much wrestling. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Your voice. How the hell oh, yeah. did you know I was in what wrestling? Are you talking about? How did you know I was in wrestling? Wait a minute. Wait a second. What you the fuck? You're trying to sound like a wrestler, but you, you aren't a wrestler. Wait a minute. What wrestler? wrestler? What What the okay. fuck? What? <laughs> Wait a second. What wrestler are you talking about? How do you know this? Because you're trying to sound like them, but that's not really your voice. What so. wrestler do I sound like? What what wrestler? <laughs> I don't know. I don't watch wrestling, but you try to shut sound the like fuck them. Fuck up. Then if you don't know, then shut the fuck up. If you don't know wrestling, kiss the <laughs> fucking real. Okay. I yeah, live this. Like I voice. blew up my ACL. <laughs> What the fuck? Shut the fuck up. Why are you laughing Just, at me? What the fuck is happening right now? I blew up my ACL. I'm gonna shit. Said, what the fuck? Is I'm gonna shit right in now? your fart box. What would he say? <laughs> fart box? <laughs> I swear to God. You just like to waste time. I am going to it's shit. I am going to <laughs> shit on your chest and call and call you my fabulous <laughs> moolah. Yo, ab that Google. This one's smart yeah. here. You just like to waste time. Just what is going on? I mean, I'm drinking right now. You're really fucking with my mind. How did you know I was a wrestler? Like, seriously, these things are supposed to be private. They don't go through your shit. Retrograde. <laughs> I have privates. You're trying to sound like a wrestler, but that's not your real voice. That's what I'm trying to say to you. How Wait you a shut minute. the fuck up what and the, finger What is my like, real voice? On? What? How is this not my real you're voice? You're pretending. You're pretending to sound like... 
like something else you know. what so, the hell is going on like you're the third person that's told me that i am the real deal yo call her a faggot <laughs> You can look. Well, then maybe I speak swear to God, voice. you can look me up on foot. Wait a minute, what's a regular voice? I don't understand what you're saying to me. Like this is like my voice. voice. This is, no, I'm giving that. you my normal voice when I'm wrestling. <laughs> when I'm wrestling and I'm cutting a promo, I sound like this. I will cut your head off because I'm giving you a promo. But when I'm talking to you normal, I don't okay, realize. Okay, relax. But this is my <laughs> real <laughs> voice. <laughs> what do I? Do you want me to choke myself? I mean, what the fuck is happening right now? I'm gonna choke you. I'm uh, about three seconds away I? from. Say where am I? Putting you in his pit of spikes. Yeah, act like you don't know where you are. Say where, where am I? Where am I? Feed me clit. Feed me clit. I want. I called for one where reason. Listen, I? I've been drinking a little bit. I know that that's weird. Probably fucking around with your mind a little bit, but finish Act like it. you got dementia, Joe. Where am I right now? Where am I right now? Can you <laughs> help me? I think you need medical help. <laughs> I, I was a fucking, like I told you. <laughs> I used to be a medical examiner. What the fuck is, how do you know this? <laughs> no, I think you need right medical now? help. <laughs> you know, I called Mrs. Cole. Shut the fuck up. Listen. The last guy that told me this, seriously, the last guy that fucked around with me like this was a guy named Scott McKinnon, and he tried to he tried to finger my asshole. Let me tell you, this is my real voice. Oh, I don't. Talking about I really, really don't understand. Oh, you're boring me now. Come on, you're so boring me right now. You want me to pour my You want me to pour my cum fuck down is your throat? Problem? You don't have any cum. What the fuck are you saying? Like you're like, oh, your voice isn't real. You don't have cum. Look at Leah's face right now. Do you understand how much cum I have? I have so much cum it would feed the homeless. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to be funny, but you're forgetting. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? Failing miserably. Wait a minute. What the fuck? What? You trying to be funny? What's funny about that? I'll, I'll fill your fucking mouth. <laughs> 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 Finish it. I will finish it. Shell shock. Shell shock. <laughs> <laughs> Shell shock. Mm, yeah. You're a naughty one. Hulk Hogan doesn't sound a thing like me. No, because you're faking your voice. I'm not. What the <laughs> fuck is going on with this faking of voices? This is my goddamn voice. See, no, I know it's Hulk not Hogan your personally. real fucking voice. Come Listen, on, I will tell you this. Stupid. You cannot tell anybody this. Go look up Ryback on YouTube right now. Look up Ryback. You will find my fucking voice. You'll know it's me. And you're going to feel fucking dumb. Like, I mean, really. Like, I'm drinking right now. And, and I came in. I'm getting sober because of this. Look up Ryback. Finish it. <laughs> <laughs> you are gonna you're gonna watch this video and you're gonna be like, what the fuck? I really wow, I'm stupid. Like I should have stayed he's I should have stayed on the phone with him because he's rich. No. I don't think so. I have gigantic I balls. <laughs> I have gigantic I balls. I work my balls. I don't off. care. <laughs> you, know, you really need to become more, a little bit more positive about everything right now because this is really fucking crazy right now that you don't think that this is my voice. I've never had someone be like, oh, you're a fake, you you're a fake your person. In, in How do I know you're not a fucking 500-pound whore? I mean, I don't fucking know. I'm on the phone with you now. You could be a cow. You could be a fucking man. I don't even know that, but I'm not questioning what you sound like. I don't fucking understand. Like... I could see if because I'm not trying to waste your time. You're trying to waste my time by being I'm giving, a lot of troll. I'm not. I, no, I want to come. Trolling me. Number one, I want to come. Number two, I'm giving you money right now. What is? What are you talking about? Even if it was, I'm not trying to troll. I'm trying to drink and have a good time. I'm starting to sober up now, though. It's really fucking weird that this is happening. Every fucking time they say my voice is fake. <laughs> I don't fucking understand this. I really don't get it. I really don't get it, mom. I've been ah, <laughs> mom. I'm really, I, I, mom. Honestly, I'm trying not to be mad. 
Like, I'm fucking crazy right now. Like, I drink in Hennessy. Every time I drink Hennessy, I get fucking crazy. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I swear to God. Listen, it's not, See, look, you just go ahead and How look me. How lucky did I get for you to call me? How lucky did I get? <laughs> You're about to, you would get really lucky if Shut you let me tongue up, your bitch. clitoris. Shit, Mom! Bitch. This chick's a bitch. You become wow, so sexy. a shit bomb. Damn, you damn right. <laughs> let me tell you. I'm I'm half black, I'm half white. Lots of women like that. It's like a golden tan <laughs> that you can't get. Most I'm of the wrestlers, Oreo. like honestly though, seriously, most of the wrestlers have to go and they tan. And they go to the tanning beds and stuff. I look like this normally. You gotta plug your <laughs> podcast too. Tell about your half black. Podcast. My my dad used to sing me a song when I was a kid. My dad sang me a song because of how tan I was. Because I had a white mother and a black father. <laughs> Half black son, won't you come? <laughs> he would sing that song to me. You've heard that, right? <laughs> oh no. Okay, Chris, for now. Please try uh, again. What? Oh, what? <laughs> okay, I'm scared. Did you just call me Chris Cornell? <laughs> <laughs> tell her, hey, tell her to hang herself. <laughs> Come on, who the fuck are you trying to fuck with? Ask her if this comes with a satisfaction guarantee. Because you need when to come. When you want to fuck, I'm ready to go. You just say the word. I'm dropping draw, baby. Roll with it. Roll with it. You're about, you're about okay, five I'm seconds just away. I'm going to end the call right now. Wait a minute. Why would what? you do that? I hope you have a good night. Because I don't want to talk to you. Eat my pud. Because I don't talk to you. <laughs> 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 when you wanna fuck, I'm ready to go. You just say the word. I'm dropping draw, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. right. so, go, go, go. Roll with it. Roll with it. You're about, you're about okay, five seconds I'm away. I'm the call right now. Wait a minute. Why what? would you do that? I hope you have a good night. Because I don't want to talk to you. Eat my pud. Because I don't talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, what a bitch. <laughs> oh my god, bro. These bitches are out of their minds, man. <laughs> they didn't pay no, money. Goes, Eat my pud. Eat my pud. <laughs> Eat my pud. Yeah, they're like, no, I don't want easy money. Who says eat my That's what pud? I'm saying. I know, I I'm telling know, you, dude. dude. I'm telling you, dude. Eat my you want to seriously? Do you want to eat my fucking pud? Sit on my face and eat my pud. I couldn't help it, man. I, I I thought of the first thing I thought of. Eat my pud. You're really trying to get fucked up. I am trying to get fucked up, and I'm just pissed off at this uh, world right now. I mean, like, get me there. <laughs> Yeah, you want to... I just I want to be punched in the face and beaten. I would love to abuse you and fuck you up and punch you in your fucking face. Oh, my God. Would you fucking and love if you just beat the shit? Dick is in your hands. Oh, my God. I want you to beat... I want you to call me my brother. I want you to beat me and call me, call me Drew. I would beat you and call you fucking Drew. Mm, Drew oh. must be a fucking loser and deserve to get his ass beat all the time, and that's who you are. I would beat you, punch you in your face, and say you're nobody but Drew. Are oh. you Drew? Oh my god, yeah. Fucking beat my fucking big Drew lips off my big fucking Drew lips. I want you to derail my cock. Because <laughs> it's <laughs> worth nothing. Fucking! You pretty much don't even need a fucking cock, Drew. I don't need a fucking cock. I want you to fucking beat the shit out of me like I'm Joey Janela. No, I'm gonna beat your fucking face and I'm gonna beat and stomp on your fucking dick, Drew. <laughs> fucking loser, Drew, yeah. with a cock that you don't even fucking need. I'm gonna punch you in your fucking face. I'm gonna blow up your fucking lips. You're gonna be bruised and have black fucking eyes, a bloody fucking nose, and a wrecked fucking dick, Drew. <laughs> oh yeah, fucking yeah. do what fucking yeah. God should have done to me. Do what God should have done to me. Beat the meat lips out of beat the fuck out of my meat lips. Oh my god. Mm, he should have. God should have done it himself, but that leaves me to do it. 
just beat the fucking shit out of you, beat you to a fucking pulp, blow up your fucking lips, have blood every fucking where, Drew. Oh my god, I'm gonna You're fucking. I'm about, to, I'm about to come. I'm about to come. I'm not gonna come yet, but I'm gonna do my fucking thing. I'm gonna do I my don't. thing. So I'm gonna do my thing. I'm gonna I do my thing. Do your thing. Do your fucking thing. Beat the shit out of your fucking dick, Drew. You fucking loser. <laughs> Beat the shit out of your fucking ugly face. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh. Wow. Oh. Oh. Wow. I'm fucking. Oh my god. This is so weird. I. <laughs> I'm so fucking fucked up from this. My big fat meat lip face. My big fat meat lip face. I should have been fucking called a dog when I was seven. Fucking. I should have been thrown in a pool when I was 22. What? I'm calling you a fucking dog what? now, and I could still push you in the fucking pool and hold your head under the water. <laughs> Watch your face and flailing arms. Oh, you fucking loser, true. Drown me, fucking, me in the fucking fucking pool. Drown me in the fucking pool. Smiley face. Smiley face. Smiley face. Smiley face. Drown me in the fucking pool. Smiley face. Smiley face. I'm gonna hold your head face. under. Smiley I'm face. Not gonna let you smiley up. face. Smiley face. Smiley Swelling face. your arms, your eyes all wide. Ah! Face puffed up. Yeah, fuck me up. Oh fuck me up. I'm going to fuck you up because you're a fucking waste. You're useless. <laughs> Just trip you and push you in the fucking pool and hold you under. Hold you there. You Drunk fucking coward. Oh, Lostness yeah. of life. Fucking mess with my whole fucking Locked life. I want life. you to fucking pour cocaine on my dick and snort it, and then I want you to smash a banana over my peel a fucking banana slowly in front of me and then smash it up my nose so I can't breathe. <laughs> mm. What? You shouldn't be able to breathe. I mean all you're gonna smell is a fucking rancid banana up your fucking nose <laughs> pouring cocaine over your dick and inside your pee hole <laughs> hold open your pee hole and pour coke right inside your fucking useless waste of a fucking dick you're a fucking loser Joe fuck it I'm a loser I want I think that I want me and you to fucking go to fucking I want me and you to go to JD's house and I want my friend JD I want him to have to watch me fuck you and him you fuck me and break us both in half. Me and JD. I want you to break me and JD in the fucking pieces together because I've always wanted to fuck him and he won't fuck me. I want you to do that to both of us. You deserve it for wanting to fuck your friend JD. You both deserve to be broken into fucking pieces. I'll rip your arms off, rip your legs off, and break you in fucking half. You both are fucking losers and you deserve each other. Breaking He's, you both into pieces, pulling he, your arms out of your fucking sockets, ripping your fucking legs off, and ripping your fucking dicks off, and shoving them down your fucking throat, balls and all. You both pieces of shit. He's, Losers. He cares about his. Losers. He fucking cares about his cats more than fucking me. You know that JD? He cares. JD. He's he, fucking he, his cats. He's fucking his cats. <laughs> <laughs> he does. You, you. I didn't even tell you that. I didn't even say that to you. You said that. You're the one that's saying he fucks his cats. I didn't even say that. This is so weird. Oh my he god. Is. This is... He is. He's fucking his cats. He's a fucking hairball dick. He said it. I didn't say it. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> I hope he fucking beats. I hope his cats rape him to death. Yeah. He's got his ass stuck in his cat. <laughs> <laughs> He's from New fuck? York. I want to go there and just fucking, I want to watch them eat him alive. He's from New York. You know that? JD is from New York, and I want his cats to eat him alive. <laughs> they will. Oh my and God. you can watch. <laughs> Might be that much fun to watch all of his cats fucking growling. And fuck cats. What the Fuck! Who yeah. fucking cats with all the fucking hair and crunching and crunching and they're fucking pissy in their nasty fucking litter box? They're always 
fucking flea bag, motherfuckers, and he's fucking his cats. <laughs> he is a piece of shit. Oh my god, I'm so fucked up right now. I'm smash dickhole. The fuck out of it. I want you to put a needle in my dickhole oh my and smash my balls god. and club me. <laughs> Shell shock. Somebody just donated to Joe, and that really makes the big guy very, very happy. So what I want to do right now is I want to tell you... Hey, crying bag! Grundle! What? Oh, 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 Grundle! Gurgle, gurgle, oh, gurgle, fuck, oh, gurgle, 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 oh, gurgle, 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 Good night, everybody. Check out my Patreon, guys, if you want to support the shows and hear all the old content uploaded in audio form to patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. See you tomorrow for Throwdown. I fell.